has to do. Jazz hands. Come on, let's see the jazz hands. Jazz Walter. hands. All right. There okay, we there we go. Walter's putting on. Walter's putting on his helmet. I can't put mine on. What's up, people? We are live. Put on your big girl panties. The apocalypse with the eclipse has come and gone. <laughs> and we are still here live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. I'm Hank Strange. Of course, we've got my friend Kevin Dixie from NOC Firearms Training. Yes, sir. What's going on? What's up, man? And, and you know, like you, we, we also have the old man in the sea. <laughs> Walter Keller <laughs> from Safety, rough, man. You are <laughs> from Safety Harbor Firearms. What's up. what's up, Walter? Oh, you know, we survived the eclipse. Absolutely not, nothing got done in the shop today because everybody was monkeying around all day. Yeah. yeah. So hey. Standing outside yeah. looking at the sun. It's a once in a lifetime. Yeah, I saw pictures of you guys from doing that. And of course, you guys were using uh welding helmets. So I figured I'll bring mine. Mine's kind of dirty, as you see. I left the dirt on mine because that helps uh, filter out the sun, the dirt. This uh, is something that people don't know. That's the, the don't clean. extra filter. Yeah, don't clean. <laughs> I don't even know if this works. So if I go blind in like the next week, <laughs> it's because of this thing. Mine is solar powered. How's What's yours we'll powered? You, we just call you Ray Charles then. Uh, yeah. Because like, supposedly that's how. I'm doing one of these numbers. Yeah, huh? that's how he lost his vision by looking at the sun. That's the story I heard. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what. Uh, I that's not what I saw in the movie. I don't. I oh. remember watching the movie, but I don't remember that. Oh well, I, then I'm I'm missing. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm. Because <laughs> that was actually a pretty cool movie. Yeah, that's well, like, it was a really good movie. Yeah, that's you know, um, I'm like fifty fifty with Jamie Foxx in movies. Like sometimes he's brilliant in a movie, and then like the next movie. Mm, not so much, but much. That, yeah, but that was a good movie. So, um, Kevin, did you yes. see the uh, the apocalypse of the sun? Did you see this thing? I did see it. I was outside, live and direct for it. You know, what no, I mean, you're you're on the west coast, <coughs> ish, almost, right? I'm in the Midwest, man. Yeah, <laughs> in the middle of things. In the That's middle, of, yeah, you're in the middle, so you have plenty of time there in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, St. Louis. How, so yeah, where you were, did you get like a hundred percent, or were you like? Oh yeah, I saw a full full thing. Oh, yeah, you we saw were right in path. Nice. Oh, cool. Okay, did you? What kind of glasses did you use, or did you use welding helmets like us professionals? No, I, I could go grab them. I used the little cheap two dollar charity glasses. You know, the I'm pretty sure like they made them for 3D movies and they just didn't work, so they gave them to us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah yeah is it a good idea to is it a good idea to um risk your vision <laughs> i don't know i took a chance i glanced up at it over the glasses for for yeah. a quick it wasn't even a full second like a quarter of a second but it was a it's a beautiful sight man it was, it was pretty gorgeous it was cool yeah. you, did you take yeah. pictures or you just watched it no nah, i was not risking my phone no <laughs> you like, no, wait a second you I mean, you no, refuse no. you refuse to risk your phone but your eyes Hey man, oh, I yeah. just glanced over the top for a quick second. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> if you think about, it, you know, you look at the sun all the time, and you're driving and stuff like that. And you ain't blind. It's just you just you just don't sit there and stare at it for hours right. or anything. So yeah, and apparently, okay. you know, what is it? Focus radiation when it's like that, so it's like a concentrated blast. Listen, we we've got universal health care in America now. Okay, <laughs> you don't so know. You, it's you gonna be okay if you look at the sun. <laughs> well, speak, your eyeballs you, gets fried. Do you know anybody that's tried to use Obamacare? I, I've heard oh. some stories from people who have tried to actually get health care. Oh, to get the actual, it's a cluster. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think of, I think I have, you know, spoken to a couple of people that have actually used the actual thing. But the rest of us that have anyone that has health care screwed over. Well, yeah, because so, it, my insurance is three times what it used to cost. That's why. Yeah, and it doesn't cover a whole bunch of stuff, and it's totally ridiculous. Well, you know, when so, I go when I go to get something done nine times out of ten, I say I just want to pay for it, and they give me this look like, what? Yeah. What do you don't pay for it. Yeah, I want to pay for it. How do you pay for it? Oh, uh, you got insurance? Uh, yeah, I do, but I want to pay. The deductible is like five. <laughs> Well, you can you can pay for it if you want to. You can pay for it out of pocket. You could probably they don't, they don't know they don't know how to act when you say you want to pay for it. So yeah, 
So let's, um, I, I want to say what's up to everyone that's hanging out in the chat. You guys, don't forget to like share this. I got to so, Don't forget to like hit the thumbs up button for this thing. Oh, you yeah. know. Hit the thumbs up button. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. YouTube's been unsubscribing people. They're probably watching now because every single one of these videos that we do and any video we do on the channel, they're automatically demonetizing. Wow, that sucks. Yeah, because we've caused trouble. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you, you share it, though, on your social media. So, um, you know, share the link with your with your friends and family and all that kind of good stuff on social media. Invite them to join us. I want to say what's up to everyone in the chat. Uh, let's see who we see here. Let's see who was first. So Chris Bullis was first. He was first to come into the chat. Then we had uh, uh, we had Joe Carpenter. And let's see who else is in there right now. Esteban is in there, and I see Chris B, 803 Salad Shooter. So there's there's a whole bunch of people that are there in the chat. Uh, DC2 Mega Boost. Some very cool names in there. Lola is not here yet, so there's not going to be very much organization. Lola is like actually, I don't know, interviewing people. She had to hire people or something today. Oh, that sucks. Some oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't like doing that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, you don't like hiring anyone? Well, it's it's always hard. You're trying to find somebody, then, you know, it, it just, you know, it's it's hard yeah. finding people that do the kind of stuff we do. <laughs> so, so what's better, firing or hiring? Well, I've had to fire once, and that wasn't pleasant either, but I had to do it because it was killing me. Um, oh, okay. The guy was just... Taking a, I felt take advantage of me, so it's after a while I just had to do it. So, yeah, you don't seem like a bad boss. What about you, Kevin? You hired fired people? Um, I've had uh, the unfortunate pleasure of um, letting a few people go before, um, over the past over the years. But man, do your job, man. I really don't feel a lot of sympathy for wrong people that just refuse to work. Yeah. 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 So it's it's crazy, you know. Um, I I've done some of that myself. I don't beat around the bush. So I know like everyone thinks I'm probably like just a real happy go lucky guy. <laughs> but oh, if I get like warning signs about you, I only I think like if I reach three warning signs, you're out. Well, you, you know, it's always hard to just, you know, when you I mean you you think about a guy or a girl even, they got family, they have things like that to take care of. So it's not like you have to be heartless doing it, but at the same time, I can't allow what your home life is to affect the fact you're not being productive. Yeah, and that, that happens a lot. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we all got to move forward here. Okay. So we, we are going to talk about the eclipse and yeah. other things in the news. Let me see who else has joined us. Uh, we got Paul Purdy, Jay Hawk, 511, Robert McNeely, Kevin Dufresne, Meredith's Mayhem, the DC Channel, uh, Trainwreck, Train, right? So there you go. Yeah, some people like people have interesting names. It makes me feel like Hank Strange is a little bit too corny. <laughs> well, you know, if like, you're not I, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to be like Voltron, Megadeth. Oh, hey, I got it. I, 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 I had this weird thing. You know, if you pick up a wrench usually and look at, at a wrench you use for working on stuff, it'll say Chrome Vandium. Uh huh. I'm gonna that's name a kid Chrome Vandium. Yeah, that sounds cool. Chrome Vandium. It sounds like a superhero. Yeah, yeah. Chrome Vandium. No, see, we we just don't have cool names, <laughs> but uh, at least the folks out there do have cool names. So, what's up to you cool. guys? Yeah. So, um, yeah, with this apocalypse, man, did um, you know, did you? Were there any like weird things out where you are, Kevin? When the apoc like, did the animals all stop and look up at the sky? Did they bow down? Was there any? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the what are those things called, man? I always say the name wrong. It's crickets, and then there's the other thing, the big things, the quesadillas. Not the cold. um. Oh, not yeah, not um. Um, cicadas. Cicadas. cicadas those yeah. things. They um, went I quiet, right? Yeah, bugs. Yeah, they, I mean, as soon as it got like you know to the banana moon, they started chirping and jumping all over the place. But yeah, aliens didn't come greet us or. Uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it just started chirping when, uh, when it, it passed. Now, I will tell you the cool thing about all the. You ever seen that movie Signs? That um, M. Night Shyamalan movie or whatever? Um, no, because I hate M. Night Shyamalan. I think he's the worst filmmaker ever. 
that really? ever existed. I mean, again, I hate any there. movie that he makes. I refuse to watch it. But no, go ahead, tell us. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of cool to see uh, some of the uh, the leaves in the tree when the uh, when the uh, the moon passed the sun, how mm. reverse shadow the, the leaves on the ground, and that was kind of. Uh -huh. cool. uh, but and I think that was signs from you know God or some yeah. aliens that were like you know doing sign language. Maybe it was gang signs. I'm not sure, <laughs> but. It was it was good to see, but not nothing crazy, man. A lot of traffic, yeah. unnecessary traffic. Yeah, a lot of people from uh, overseas in town. Yeah, because uh, you guys, I mean, you guys had, like Florida. <laughs> yeah, um, overseas. <laughs> not, not, sure. Oh, uh, we had a bunch of from like Spain and um, yeah, uh, uh, other parts of Europe that came in town. Yeah, because you guys were getting it. Well, not like you said, you're in the middle, so you're not mm -hmm. getting it right yeah, away. Yeah. Did you guys have it for the longest amount of time or something like that? You know, it lasted the full eclipse. I didn't count, but I want. I mean, it was close to two minutes. It seemed like where it was fully eclipsed, and then it just slowly caught, started going. You know, dropped about 13, 14 degrees. Um, oh, well, that's just, a cool. That's the neat part. We didn't have much. We it, the the intensity of the sun went away, so you could stand outside and it didn't feel yeah. as intense. But yeah, yeah, it was. You know what it was like for us here in Florida at that time, which I think for us was like around four thirty or something, right? So it was about three. It was ten three. minutes to three at the peak. Yeah, so um, here, where you are, yeah. yeah, I think for me, where I was, it was like around, uh, no, it was three, it was 3.30 or something like that, yeah, so um, it, it got like golden hour, so you know, if you're into video and stuff like that, you have golden hour, like right before the sun goes down, it was really cloudy here too, so it got a little shaded, oh. and then like Kevin was saying, it was, uh, I noticed all the creatures outside went quiet. We uh we had we had no clouds at all, so it, it oh it just got kind of it got kind of yellow out a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. like it was pre golden, 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 yeah, golden. and then yeah, so it wasn't as didn't seem as hot out, even though it still was, and then back to normal. Yeah, so I went out. I saw. I didn't see obviously the full thing. I used my I used my uh, my welding mask that I thought of at the last second which I got from Harbor Freight. You said you have one of the expensive thing. You have like a Miller. This is an actual Miller welder. It, it, it ain't working right, so it sucks. Oh, well, I don't think this worked either. The Harbor and, Freight. And this one's 13. This one acts 13 on it, which I think you're supposed to have 13 or 14, right? Or more, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had yeah. some Harbor Freight ones that work. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, man, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, it was a cool oh, thing. <laughs> Those were the things you used, Kevin? Yes, sir. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> That's the movie theater thing. Yeah, some yeah I told them it's like reject 3D glasses they couldn't use, and they just like auction them off. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, hold on to it for the next. Uh, I don't know how how many years is it going to be before we get the next one. Someone will let us know. Long time. Yeah. Oops. Somebody so, was saying the birds are flying backwards where they live. That's what Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, sure. Kevin, okay. Willis, <laughs> birds flew backwards in Alabama. I think they yeah. got into some. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Now, um, do you guys have recreational marijuana where you're at, Kevin? Um, there are whispers of it coming true. Um, oh, okay. Um, I believe it is going to be on the horizon here very, very soon. Uh, there are a couple of people running around with some special doctor notices, but nothing, nothing big. Okay. Here. So you guys are medicinal. Yeah, I was just wondering if that's why, like, you you had all the uh, the uh, the tourists and everything. You know what's funny? Like, uh, my um, my younger son, that's still in high school the school let him out early i don't know if other schools did that here in florida but they let him out early and their reasoning was they didn't want the kids on the school property looking up at the sun mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't want the lawsuits <laughs> yep. yeah so, my son was out of school already his high school gets out he gets out at 150 so he was already out so yeah so, you know, um, so the thing is, is that so and then my older son went and got him because he's home and and um, he was so the younger one was knocked out sleeping when this thing happened. And the and so just the older, just my older son, angst and myself, we watched that thing. And then Lola was at work and Lola was out there with her phone taking pictures. And I was like, oh, man. She's going to burn the iPhone. <laughs> no, I took a picture with her phone. It just turned a big ball of. Yeah. Nothing. You know, she got a not too bad one because I think she caught some clouds. Like if you caught the clouds and stuff like that, and and you know you could have gotten something good. So yeah. now, you know, so no one did any sacrifices, huh? No chickens, no. There was no <laughs> they were too. Yeah. Sad. I mean, yeah. 
There was no like, no one saw. Did, did anyone see any special rituals going down? You know, any special um, circles? Yeah, the people <laughs> that can drive route and different population, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I was just wondering because you know, I mean, no, no Mayan, no Mayan uh, rituals going down, right? This is supposed to be. <laughs> no. is, isn't this supposed to be like a Bible sign of the end of the world? <laughs> I mean, like, I, <laughs> I don't know. I think there's, you're reading into a lot more than there there's is. so many. Listen, there's so many. There's so much craziness out there. You know, actually, my brother, my brother calls me up and he was like, uh, there's a, like everything I'm reading in all the different news that I read. There's some mention of the apocalypse. What the hell is, you know, of the eclipse? What's going on? Is this like a thing? And honestly, I, I told him, I think the reason why there was so much mention of the eclipse and all these news articles is because it was trending, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone was just putting that in their thing, including us. I put that, I put that in our thing. Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is, you know, it's a spectacular thing to see. I mean, Mother Nature yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. We probably, when's the next time it's going to be? I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's it's going to be. Yeah, someone has to look up the next time it's going to be. And then I saw, you know, there's like lots of videos. So does anyone on this panel, out of the three of us, do any of you guys believe that the that the earth is flat? Put your hands up. Or is there anyone out there in the chat room, anyone watching this that believes that the planet is flat? I just want to know. Go ahead, Walter. You can put your hands up. We won't make fun of you. I don't believe it's flat. Yeah, this is no. a safe. This is a safe space, Walter. No, I don't need your. I don't need your safe space. You hear me, Scott? Let me know if anyone. I just want to seriously. Does anyone out there think? That, I got your safe space right here. Come on, right here. Okay, I think Kevin Dufresne is saying 2024. Yeah, it's going to be 2024. It's going to be um April 8th of 2024. Yeah. No, is that, is that, so, it, it won't be a full across the country one, will it, or just? Um, I don't know. Yeah. That, that would happen today. It's rare. Yeah. So here's the thing, because, you know, <laughs> this like, you know, that, you know, they are the flat earthers, right? Oh, yeah, you know, they are flat earthers. I personally believe that that is like, um, you know, those green frog dudes. Like, have you seen there's people who have like the, the frog guy in their in their uh, profile picture or whatever? There's some people there's some people out there that are putting out the thing. I think I don't know if it's the green frog dudes, but there's definitely people out there putting it out that the earth is flat hmm. and there's folks who believe that there's flat earthers out there and uh there's some flat earth earthers that believe because we didn't get a hundred percent um total eclipse everywhere that that's proof it that we're that we're living on a disc living on the edge yeah that we're living on a disc floating in space yeah. so yeah i don't know yeah i just want to know i just want to know if we have any of those people out there because you know maybe we will let them We'll let them come on and try to convince us. It's so crazy, man. Like we've gone, you know, there's actually people that are going backwards. I think if you believe that the earth is flat, it allows you to just, you know, go along with a lot of other crap. What do you think, well, Walter? What do you think that, about the flat earther dudes? No, that's, that's, you know, to each his own, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, it ain't flat, Holmes. Yeah. Ain't 904, 904 Outdoors says he likes flat, dark earth. Yeah, well, bless his heart. Yeah. Does that count? No, flat, dark earth. Yeah, know, right. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Dirt. Flat yeah. Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. I, I, you know, whatever. There, I, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that, you but know, I know I'm there was people out there. Me. Yeah, yeah I know there's people out there that were saying that this is the proof. The proof that the earth is. But, earth. you know, if you believe that. Earth. Yeah, if you believe that, you you will, uh, you know, de definitely there's a bridge that we could sell you in Brooklyn. Yeah, I mean, if you if you worship the sky and the moon and all that stuff and the sun, it was a big day today, but, you know. Uh, yeah. I think, you know what, here, here's what I think. I think it's cool to, to see this, um, you know, visual representation that we are on a tiny planet in a big massive infinite universe or a flea on a on a on a, on a freaking it can't even it's not, it's not even a, yeah yeah that we are infant so infinitesimal right you know 
Mm -hmm. uh, in the scope of things, I think it's good. It's good to ground you and show you when there's a whole bunch of things going on, you know, like when people are like tearing down statues because they think that's going to yeah, that's going to somehow yeah. solve everything and make everything better. Um, you know, when there's all that when there's a lot of craziness, you know, on, on all sides, it's craziness going on. I think it's uh, good to to do that when things happen that remind you. <laughs> how tiny you are in the scope of the universe. Is it infinitesimal? Infinitesimal or something? Infil like yeah, infinitesimal. Yeah, yeah. You're just that's a flea on a. You're less yeah. than a flea on a dog's ass. That's what. Uh, yeah. You know. And um, you know, I mean, and I know that there's people. Obviously, there's people out there that um, you know don't believe in a higher power and all that kind of stuff. I personally believe that there is a truth out there. You know, and uh, we we're we're not you know we're not clever enough yet to 100% figure out the truth of everything. But there is order to the universe, as far as I'm concerned, and this is one of the things that uh, I, I was get a kick, I, get, I was get a kick out as people who think they know everything. Oh well, this is this is how the world was, and this is how where civilization came from, and and then when something comes up and it kind of you know, they find this something stuffed in the ground someplace and it goes, oh, well. Well, 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 well. It's like, well, you don't know what you, you have no idea what where the hell the Earth came from or where civilization came from. Yeah. Well, the Earth is and the planet itself is pretty old. So yeah, imagine Earth. how many times uh, human beings or things like human beings, what we're calling human beings, could have lived and died on the face of this planet, and like amazing societies could have, you know, grown up. It's possible. And, and done all kinds of crazy things and then just totally disappeared and then started all over again. When change comes, it's pretty violent and um, heated, for real. Mm -hmm. So it usually cleans, Earth cleans itself up pretty good when it comes time. Yeah. And the thing is, is we can do a lot of, we can, we can do a lot of damage, but we can't erase the planet. <laughs> you you know? It's pretty, yeah. it'd be like thinking that I drive a Suburban and because I drive a Suburban, the, the, the climate's going to change. Hello? It ain't gonna change because of me. Yeah, we, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that this serves to remind you. If it wants to change, it'll change so drastic you won't even get a chance to react. So. Yeah. And ultimately, you know what's our biggest enemy, Kevin? Do you know what is our biggest enemy? Our biggest enemy? Yeah. Do you know what's like? There's all these things that want to kill us, right? There's all Big these things. Around in space is our biggest. There's, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, like a realistic enemy that we have is the sun. The sun will eventually yeah. kill our asses. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. it, <laughs> yeah. it, provides, it provides life and it, it can take it away too. Huh? What was that, Kevin? That we have, we it's it's like a you know it's the sun's I don't know it's it's kind of interesting. We need it to survive, um, but yet if we we trust in it too much, yeah, it'll definitely wipe us out. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, it, it'll probably be a long time from now. I don't know if it's a billion years or hundreds of millions of years or whatever. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll be long gone by then, so. But at some point, the Earth is taking us out. I mean, the sun. The sun is taking us out. Something like that will happen. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, it, you know, it's like I think a lot. A lot of times, things like this are things that remind us of scale. Right. You know, so again, when we're dealing with things, it's that flea on a dog's ass thing. You're just. You're not even. Yeah. It doesn't we, matter. You know, it, it's not gonna make any difference. You know? Which is like, that, the whole other thing about why we don't. We should appreciate life more, right? Like it just it just kills me the people that get a blessing like it's life. I don't care where you think it comes from, but you get blessed with something like life. And all you do is be angry all the time, hide in a bubble, look for reasons to hate life. And it's like eh, you might want to take advantage of this opportunity because you're not really that big on the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things. No, nope. you know, appreciate it. Love it. Enjoy it. Live life to the fullest. And people that just like, for instance, a guy that doesn't that just comes up and just as wants to go live in prison, just does whatever he can to stay in prison. You know, we used to call them institutionalized, where you just constantly want to go back. It's like, what? Just go live on an island in the in the wilderness and enjoy nature. If you want to just be, you know, confined. But man, just to give up on life is amazing. I, I don't get it. Yeah. I think there's lots of people that like to live in institutions. Not just you, you're right. There are the people that like to live in uh, prison, the institutions that are prisons, but there's people that just like to live within a lot of different institutions. And uh, so to a lot of people, that's security. Yeah, it's like you know, there's our comfort, comfort and security. They, they, in have to what's live known. In, they have to live in a neighborhood with walls around it and they have to have, everybody's house has to be the same. It's like, you know. Yeah. 
But if you think about it, like it's really like what's unknown is really scary to all of us. It's scary to all of us. Some of us can deal with it better than others. Yeah. But that's really the thing that I think that we're dealing with, you know, that, man, we spend so much time, I think, like what I think is that we spend so much time fighting, hating each other, you know, we, we don't get along because of this thing or that thing or something that your ancestors did to me or my ancestors did to yeah. you, you know, or you cut me off in traffic or you don't let me, you know, you don't let me in in traffic or something like that. And you're right, man. The time, I mean, we're we're like less than like a candle, you know, really. And the the time that we have, if we would just really try to do more productive things with it, there's so many things that we don't even know, like about this planet that we live on, yeah. much less the whole universe and everything that's spinning out there. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know nothing. Every every day they find out new things, new animals. Yeah. You know, so that just goes to prove, you know, you just don't don't accept everything you're told about how things are because it's not necessarily it's just what somebody it's like the weather you know they say oh it's it's this is the hottest it's ever been really how do you know that you only had accurate weather stuff for like a hundred years uh, they you know whenever I'm sure it's been hotter and on the planet and it's been colder I think that there's things that prove called, that. there's that place called Greenland you know why they call it Greenland because it used to be green and now it's all iced over so mm -hmm. um, the Vikings lived on Greenland until until the weather changed and they got frozen out. From what I understand, that's what they figure. So, oh, okay, we definitely don't. Here, here's here's a good example. Here is some uh, some mammoth tusk, mammoth ivory. Oh, really? Okay. This is mammoth ivory. I bought it at a gun show. Um, it's the only kind of ivory you can legally own now, or you can legally use to make things out of. Mammoth ivory. Mammoth ivory, so like from Siberia, oh. stuff like that. Oh, so, cool. Uh, this stuff. What? Could, Mm -hmm. This could be eight, ten thousand years old, you know. I mean, or more. It's just or more, yeah. Depending yeah. on where you know where it was, where it was, where it was at. But it's cool, you know. Yeah. Just think, think something that old, you know. Yeah. Um, the thing I wonder about all of that is, you know, obviously, like we're gun guys, and you know, we're we're being a little spiritual right now, yeah. talking about all these things. But here's the thing that I wonder, the people out there that want to take guns from, you know, from us and, and uh, the people on the other side of where we're at, you know, do you think that, <laughs> do you think that they will uh, be all kumbaya and be like, yeah, you know, let's get along. There's lots of things that will kill us in the world. Do you think so? Or they're just going to like check out the sun and then, you know, check out the eclipse of the sun and then just go back. To, no, they just go to, back, man. There's the, yeah. some some people. I mean, nothing broad scope like this will ever change. The only thing that changes, anti-gunners for real, is uh, is people like us and the guys on the chat having those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Something big coming coming like this. I think actually it'll probably give them more ammunition to speak. You know, like, oh, you know, the 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 earth is such a beautiful place. Why can't we all just get along and get rid of the guns and enjoy things and because you know you still got evil people there were i'm pretty sure there's somebody out there today that did waited till the eclipse came and did something evil we just haven't heard about it yet but i'm pretty sure that. yeah I, yeah i'm really su I, i'm surprised somebody somewhere didn't freak out because it got a little dark during the middle of the day started doing weird stuff it always happens yeah so like, when there's a full moon you know people do weird stuff you know people are silly yeah well, probably gonna take more than eclipse to change their mind hank well, yeah, you know, I mean, before this, in the last couple of days, there's been a lot of crazy stuff out there. Um, I don't know what you guys think about it. I don't know if you, you even want to get into it or try to move on from it. But obviously, there's a there's a bunch of things out there, like what's happening with uh, statues and stuff like that being taken down. What do you think about that, Kevin? What's your what's your your take on it? Do you care? Does it matter to you? You know, I I, I looked at the the statues in a couple of different ways. Um, I'm not. You know, even though my family originates from the South, hence my last name, you know, it doesn't get much Southern than that. Um, <laughs> it's right, you know. Um, well, you need to change it. Come on, you need to change it. <laughs> hey, look, look now, I'm so proud on it. You know, I'm trying to build on that name. But, you know, it's um, a lot of a lot of people, you cool know, name. since I get to talk to, you know, a lot of family, you know, that are from the South, come from those areas. Um, they had an outlook on, you know, everything that was considered, uh, you know, rebel if you will um and some of it and i've had some pretty open conversations a lot of it was because people that were like 
white supremacists or whatever division thereof would also coincide with the confederate flag uh there were also people that were just born under that flag along with the american flag and just took pride in the south they didn't associate it with racism they didn't associate it with hate um and i think kind of with that you had both sides like good people that just loved the south and people that were actually racist all right and that adopted the flag because they loved the south as well um and when it comes to the statues i think it, they are a part of history you know hate it or love it they're a part of history when i start to see the dollar of figures that it takes to take them down you know i don't mind looking at somebody and saying they lost i don't see why we didn't erect statues like right next to them of the union to say hey you know this is what they fought they fought against these guys and bam that way we don't lose history but we expose both sides so to me if that was an issue why not just expose both sides at the same spot and tell the entire story and then let people decide for themselves um them coming down you know i'll be honest with you most of the people here in st louis majority didn't even know the statue was in our park they don't even know what the statues are about yeah, we didn't even know it was there so when it came to taking it down, yeah, you had people going to protest and you had both sides out there kind of arguing and fighting. It didn't get as bad as Charlottesville. Um, but most people didn't even know it was there. And it was it was kind of a thing like, yeah, if it bothers you, cool. I get why it bothers you. But at the same time, depending on how you were brought up, the Confederate flag or the Confederacy really doesn't bother you. I was always taught they lost. What's the big deal? That was that was always what was told to me as a kid. And okay. I remember watching Dukes of Hazard with a whole bunch of grown people in the room. and Nobody ever said anything. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's, uh, you know, this is like an intricate thing, right? It's complicated, almost like the universe, I think. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I wasn't born here. I am descendant of slaves on, um, obviously, like, I'm, I'm mixed. So I'm, I'm uh, African, Indian, and I've got some Asian uh, blood in the mix there. But on the African side of me, obviously, I'm descendant of slaves from the Caribbean. But it's perspective, you know, everyone has a perspective on this from a, from a different point of view, including me. And, um, you know, I was just wondering from your point of view how people looked at all those saints. Because I know I, I looked at the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, come on, Daisy Dukes. <laughs> you, can't, you, know, you can't hate on that. But also, they obviously, they had, a you know, the Confederate flag on their car and everything. But, you know, um, even inside of that show, there's a whole bunch of different things going on there. And this whole thing is so complicated that I think that when people want to get into it, and believe that they can solve it by just taking down a statue or doing this thing or doing that thing. It, it's weird to me because what happens when they realize that by taking down statues, like you just said, Kevin, people didn't even realize they were there. Right. Didn't even know. Yeah. So, so you're, you're not, not this thing is there. You're not mad at it until you realize, oh my God, this thing is there. Now you so what, hate it. What is taking down a statue going to cure? You, you, you know, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't. It's a thing. If you if you were if you now I know there have been a lot of studies about why they were erected when they chose to put majority of them up around the country, but it's not I'm definitely not with white supremacy. I don't I don't agree with anything hate related. However, it's it's <coughs> kind of funny, right? So how do I look a guy that's from let's say Alabama? Mm -hmm. How do I look him in his face if he's if he's not racist, happens to be a white guy, and what? he he just has southern pride and he likes the South? How do I look him in the face and say? Because you represent that flag, you're a terrorist, you're you're a racist, you're this, you're that. When he just has pride, it's the same way about how you can look somebody in the face that waves the African flag and say, oh, you must be all about Black Lives Matter. To me, there is two, there are uh, extremists and then there are majority of us in the middle. And I think in the middle, you can have those kind of conversations to say, hey, man, you know what? Because I am in, in touch with my history, the flag hurts me and offends me for these reasons. And then you allow that individual to say, I'm sorry or whatever, man, it shouldn't hurt you, but this is what it represents to me. What do you, what do you say to somebody's uh, family that fought in the Confeder Confederacy? Yeah. And it, they were Amer it, they're Americans just like everybody else was then. They just yeah. had some different ideas, unfortunately. And, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I'm not. I think it's too comp. I think it's complicated. I think people the whole, the whole thing of this movement <clears throat> is not about that. It's about disrupting the way of life. It's it, it. This is just an excuse they're using right now to to get everybody riled up. They don't. The ones that are financing all this, they don't care about you yeah. or or your thoughts about that. Or they're using it as an excuse to get the everybody excited. 
and all riled up. And then what's next? What are we going after next? We're going to take down the Washington Monument? No. Well, we're yeah, gonna, I'm sure. I'm sure at some point we'll find out. The name of every school in the country that's named after Washington? No. Yeah, eventually, listen, listen. I think that the whole idea of progressivism is a, a a death of a thousand cuts. You heard what Obama said right. that he's going to be. He's going to change everything, right? Yeah, well, it's all I, part of that big plan. It ain't. It ain't got nothing to do with setting nobody free or or educating people about history. Half these people that are all excited, the white ones, black ones, green ones, whatever. They have no. They don't know any history. They just know that they're part of something, and they feel good. Yeah. Well, you. It's like, what are you part of? You know, you're you're being used. They're being used like a trojan. A lot of people, and they just don't realize it because they're part of something. You know. Yeah. We, you know, ahead, here, here's, here's where it gets real tricky, right? So, um, although if like if if we could prove, if we could flat out say that the erection of the statutes were were meant to be hateful and remind people of a treacherous past, let's say if that was the thing, we found that writing and that's what it was for. That's a different argument. But I think you can't take your emotions out of it for a second. Take all the emotions out of it. Just look at look at what it is. If you allow people to just start dismantling things. What's next? What is next? Because a couple of years ago, it might have been a year and a half or a year, somewhere in recent history, in Oklahoma. Now I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a Christian man, and in Oklahoma, they took down a statue of the Ten Commandments because wow. it was offending Hindu people and Buddhist people. They, I'm offended. It, it could be offended. You know, everybody. There's always something somebody's going to be offended about. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's no. like a simply slope. So, it's, but it's that's like, the whole. <clears throat> but that's one of the ch that's one of the the links in the chain. You know, uh, that that I think people will break. You know, you break this thing, and then you keep going. You go well. You know, this thing allows racism. If we if we're going to use racism because if we're going to attach it to everything, and then just try to pretend that things didn't happen in history, it's way more complicated. Okay, if we want to look at history. Let's really look at the history of, or let's, for example, history of um, the black people in the Caribbean and black people in America that were slaves, right? First of all, on this planet, every single race has been enslaved at some point in time or and or is currently enslaved because yeah, we are. still have slaves on this planet right now. Yeah. And it's so, bad slaves too. Yes. So now if you want to look at the history, particularly of like the African slave, one, one of the things that people don't realize about that. Slaves into slavery. Yeah, exactly. One of the things that people don't realize about that, maybe if you looked at, if you read or looked at roots or whatever it is, you would think that 100% of those slaves were just kidnapped. When the reality of that is that, you know, a very small percentage were kidnapped most of them were sold by their own people into slavery right. and what i mean by that and, and and most of us if you look at people who are descendant of slaves if we do a genetic test you'll find out that that african blood that we have is from from west africa right from nigeria ghana places like that and what happened in those places is that if if they um if you had a fight with this tribe over here and you know or this village or however you want to put it and and you won you own them so when these guys came over here to buy them, you just said, hey, listen, these guys are taking you, get your stuff, you're okay. going with them. You know, so now the thing about that is that me, now like for me, for example, I'm married to an African and I constantly have had problems with her family and when they get mad, they go, yeah, you're the garbage we threw away, that's why we don't like you. Because if you really talk to Africans, they'll say that, you know, slavery, they, they know they acknowledged that they sold their own people into slavery because they looked at them as garbage. That's so so now, why, why am I saying now? Obviously, they sold them. Someone bought them. When those people were brought to the Caribbean, to America, they were mistreated. You know, lots of bad things happened. Absolutely. But but you have to look at it and realize that there's not just one person or set of people that are responsible for that everyone is responsible for that so if we start holding now and and all those people that did that particular thing that we're talking about are dead and they've been dead for a long time so if we start looking at that and going well you know we, we've got to punish these people that means that at some part we've got to punish africans right well we've got to punish the people that sold their own people into slavery and still do by the way yeah so you know it's it's a it's a weird complicated thing and what we should do is just look at it and try to see the truth of that thing just like with nazis you know obviously they did 
really horrible things in the world. And it's a good thing that the world rose up against them. And specifically that America, just because, I mean, you know, the rest of the world was getting its ass kicked. And then, you know, there was a point where America decided to get in there and do something about it. And we're happy for that. Otherwise, the world would look like a completely different place. But that, but you know, there's there's also things that came out of that when they went in and and um, you know got these scientists and all that that the Nazis were using. There's a whole bunch of technology that we use today that came out of that, right or wrong. Yeah, a lot of cool toys and Germans were working on. Yeah, there's a lot of progression that we did, and and um, the technology came from there. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is that nothing is. Is that simple? So even these horrible things that happened that we can all look at and acknowledge that this was a horrible thing, we shouldn't forget about it. We shouldn't try to pretend like it doesn't exist. And when when progressives feel like they succeeded in going, okay, we've now whitewashed all the statues of you know these Confederate generals or whatever it is, we've gotten rid of that, then they will go after something else and they will keep getting rid of things. And and like Kevin is saying, when it comes to something that you believe in, that they're getting rid of and you protest that, they'll go, well, you're just, there's something wrong with you. You're a racist. You know, you're a horrible person. And so that's the thing. Like when people want to know, you know, there's a lot of people that, um, that, that want to know why, like I personally think that it's not a good thing. This is the reason why I think it's not a good thing because today, Maybe you don't care or maybe you're happy that this thing is being gotten rid of and we're pretending like it doesn't exist. Then what do you do tomorrow when they come after something that you believe in that they think is standing in the way and they go, yeah, you can't have this either. It's funny. The people that are protesting the Nazis are doing exactly what the Nazis did. The Nazis burned books. They destroyed art that they didn't like. They took down statues that they didn't like that were. Yeah. Um, Isn't know, that what the Taliban and ISIS thank you. did and is thank doing? You. No, are doing, not did, yeah. are doing. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. How does that make you better? <laughs> how does that, how does your cause better? Once again, like I said, it's not about the cause. It's about the change. Yeah. I think we need to we need to we need to think about it. Obviously, there's things that happen, but it's us. If this is something that happened a long time ago, and in most respects, it was a terrible thing that happened. But here we are. It, it changed the world. It, and let me tell you something. You know what's really crazy? I've lived in Africa. Okay, I've lived in Africa. I'm married to an African, and I'll tell you guys something. There are there are some of the richest people in the world reside in Africa but it's very few people. Most of the people in most of the countries in Africa live would life. chop off their arm or give up their child to live in America and have what, uh, you know, like what people consider like black Americans or whatever, however you want to put it, they would, they would do that in order to live here and have the things, the potential that we have access to by living here in America. So it's a weird way that the world flipped around. Like when, when, uh, when there's Africans that tell me you're the garbage that we threw away, I always say to them, yeah, it's crazy that, you know, I'm garbage you threw away, but you're here. You consciously chose to come live amongst the garbage and that you're, you're talking can. about. You're still, you're still living the garbage can. So I got yeah. out of it. Right. Cause the world has changed. The world has changed. And it's, and, and I'm not saying that that makes it a good thing that happened. I'm saying that the, because things happen this way, the world changed. Lots of times things come out of strife. An easy way to look at that, if you don't believe me, is look at your children. Look at your children and think about how you grew up. So I know this. I remember coming to America, my parents gave up everything. So we were living here in America and we had nothing, okay? And um, I remember what that felt like to have nothing, to have like hand-me-down clothes and, you know, buy stuff out of the bargain bins and all, all that kind of stuff. And then I look at my children who are like, you know, they're spoiled ass. <laughs> yeah, mine, mine, don't, uh, mine don't really, haven't really wanted for a whole lot either. You know, they yeah. Really simple, so. so when you think about that, when you think about that, then you realize that, you know, uh, there's something that comes out of strife. There's something that makes us stronger because we're suffering and our children will have to suffer as well. It doesn't, this is like something that no human being can escape. So our ancestors suffered in one way that was terrible. 
and we and we're all going to suffer in our own ways and this is the way that i think that our children are, are going to suffer it's just a different kind of suffering that's more mental than it is physical and the the way that people are doing it is by convincing them of things that you know that don't exist or that they can easily deal with except for the fact that they've got these uh blinders on or their perspective has been skewed because we are alive right now and we're dealing with these things and there's definitely people who who hate other people there's definitely people who's ra who are racist you know there's definitely people who seek to destroy other human beings out there in the world but we're here right now and we could deal with that so if someone doesn't like other people we can deal with it in this in this moment you know, I, I tell people uh, all the time, I don't, the, the slavery, the slavery, if you read the history books and get deep into it, it is, it is a little complex, right? Um, I think the biggest problem with people um, now is really more toward kind of the civil rights era, you know, uh, kind of fast forward. And it's really to the treatment of people once people were free, uh, you know, and I think to, there, there are two sides. Now, one argument that I will not tolerate is the argument that racism does not exist. Oh, oh yeah, not, of course right? it exists. Yeah, um, so, and also, it will always exist. It's not going to go. It will never be a thing that does not exist, right? Um, I I do think, and this is a part where one reason I like being part of the the gun community, if you will, um, in just a segment. I don't tolerate racism. I don't like it from either side, right? And I'm the first person to put somebody in their place when I think they are flat out being ignorant, right? Now. One thing I like, and I tell people all the time when it comes to being a gun guy, let's just take that community, the small community in the world, and focus in on it. The beauty about it is when a company puts out a bad product, right? A flat out bad product, social media will railroad that company and hold them accountable. That's the great thing about the community. So if somebody rears their head, I don't mean they just said something you kind of don't like, but they really show their head as being racist. That's the one thing I think the world can take from the gun culture is the fact that we will railroad you out of it. Like you, you have to go. Nobody's going to buy your products. Nobody's going to watch your channel. Nobody's going to support you because I believe as a as overall. Now you always have extremists. You always have idiots and everything. But overall, I think we do a great job of holding people accountable for being faithful to the humankind. And if you're not, we will railroad you out. And I think if people would just take that approach, don't yell at a group of people. Oh, well, hey, that guy did the wrong thing. Okay, well, let's deal with him, you know, and let's deal with people like him. But let's not say, you know, I, I read a post and it it, it really upset me. It, it, it really did. And this, this guy, and I won't even give him, I won't even say his name, but he flat out said that all white people are evil and the only ones that you meet are good are the fact that they are acting a role. And I'm like, really? Like, you you, you can't say that. Like, that's that's unfair. But that's the mentality that a lot of people are trying to spread which is why sometimes I run to my gun bubble because I know in this bubble we'll hold people accountable and that's kind of my spot to sit in and just kind of let maturity kind of surface itself. But the world needs to understand that there are good people, there are bad people, there are just stupid people and we need to treat those people one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of like when you do something at work or I mean you're at work and you're hammering away, you're doing your job, you know, and you get an email and the email is like, um, we're having a rash uh, occurrences of people not showing up to work on time and they're not doing the right thing. And you know you show up to work 15 minutes early every single day, right? And then they start handing down punishments to the entire team. You're like, whoa. <laughs> and everyone oh, wow. knows who it is that did like, it. <laughs> it's not me, man. Go talk to the person that you know damn well. It's clocking in late every day. Leave me alone. Right, right. And that's kind of the mentality we're taking now. We need to get over it. I think a lot of times people need to understand. A, I'll say this. A, stop making people that look like you feel like they should take your side. One. Mm -hmm. Two, um, please understand. I tell people this all the time. Think about war, right? Because if racism is a war and it, it does exist, and if it's a fight we need to try to suppress or win, great. But think about it like this. When it comes to war, you think about our, our great military when it goes to battle. Do we have, is everybody a grunt? Or do we have divisions, branches, specialists, logistics? spec ops right there are a bunch of different people that are out for the same mission they have different roles different specialties and that's the approach we need to take if we're going to eliminate hate we all have a role to play right if our ultimate mission is to get rid of it or suppress it play your role stop making other people say oh well i'm a pilot you should come be a pilot too or i believe that yeah. everybody should be we're different and we should you know? celebrate the fact that we're different and in some exactly. ways you know 
You know, exactly. Everybody's going to have their own time to get across. Right. At different times, your different makes your difference makes you awesome. Sometimes it's like, you know, not so much. <laughs> right. And another thing you people have to be honest about. And I said it when I did my my past event here, I stood up and I said it in front of everybody, please understand America. She she is a wonderful, wonderful person, but she has broke my heart. She has hurt me. She has let me down. She has not always did the right thing. But that sounds like everybody else I know in my life, too. So it is one of those things that all you can do is correct the wrongs as we see them, address them, deal with them wholeheartedly. But I'll tell you, and I use this example, I can say that on this podcast right now. And if I decided to go out in the middle of the street and yell something reverse of what I just said, something really hateful, I still get to walk back in my house. Over in, and I don't know the country, so I'm not going to speculate, but over in Africa, one of the countries in Africa, I shared a video a couple of months ago, maybe not even that long ago, where uh, the people were packed. They were Christians, and they the the, the village dug a ditch. Oh, they were stoning them and kicking them and everything else, and set them on fire. Exactly, they stoned them. Stoned yeah, was this in Nigeria? Them. It might have been Nigeria. Yeah, and they set the people on fire just for practicing a religion. So no matter where you go in the world, there's always going to be something to fix. I just believe in fixing the problems we have at home because she is not perfect, and she will never be perfect. But man, I can get up. I was able. I'm able to walk outside. I'm able to carry a firearm and defense of myself in case somebody tries to take that from me. You're able, go, You're able to pack yourself up, move anywhere you want. Yeah, I can go anywhere I want. I, if I decide tomorrow I want to move to Florida or Georgia, is I can find a job and I can go there. You know, where in other countries you don't have that freedom. I mean, you can be of a certain ethnic background. Like, what was that in uh, Rwanda? Was that a uh, the Hutus, the Hutus and uh, yeah, and the Hutsis or something like that. Like, yeah, right. If you were, if you had to be your ID card is the only way they would know. You're right. Imagine if somebody said, "Well, because you're a black man from Missouri, if you try to come into uh, Virginia, we are automatically going to beat you and stone you. We're gonna kill that you." That would be a horrible existence, right? But that still happens in places. So yeah. I believe in fixing the problems and dealing with the issues we have at home. I'm not not going anywhere, and I'm not gonna let somebody make me live a life of hate right how do you wake up every single day angry and hating something how does that happen i think that um i think a lot i'm not all of it but a lot of it has to do with the media i think the media is pushing a lot of it because that's how we get one-sided and we don't see things because there's yeah. things there's things that we would agree with. as gun guys there's certain things that don't bother us us you know like i, I know specifically that the people that i'm talking to right now like we you know i i don't think that um there's a lot of drugs like marijuana and all that. I don't even think it should be illegal. I think it's just creating something that puts people in prison. I don't, I don't smoke weed, never have, don't care about it. But I, I think it, that making it illegal is creating a lot of problems for us. And th this is something that we can agree with with people on the other side. But they go, no, you know, I'm not going to agree. I want you to agree with me on that, but I'm, but I, I, I want to take your guns away from you. And <laughs> you know, and then we we go to our separate things because. This is the kind of thing that's built up to separate us because then we could deal with these people and take this thing away and then we could deal with these guys and take it away. For example, one of the things to, to bring this back to you know what we care about as guns, a lot of the laws that you see the um, that are set up right now in regards to guns were set up after the abolition of slavery, right? Yeah. Hey, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I interject one thing there real quick? Mm -hmm. just just for the just for the audience so in in the video hasn't come out yet but i'll share with you guys what i just what i just uh said at the event when i say something you disagree with you guys let me know i'm going to speak from the perspective of what you generally hear when it comes to being anti-gun right what you heard anti-gunner say about guns they're dark scary need to be controlled we need the legislation to control them you only can control <laughs> I know where you're going. Oh, oh, I know where you're going too. <laughs> you can only control certain people with them, and then they have to be monitored. All right, they're dangerous. They're derelict. They run a risk to the American way in society. And they're dark and scary, huh? That mm -hmm. and, it, and what I did at the event when I went through those things, I went through like ten things. In front of the audience, I had a young black man who came to the event to to get you know the resources we had. I put a shirt over his head. And I read those things off to the crowd. I educated them about the 1751 uh, Spanish rule and all a bunch of other things. I walked them through the, uh, the centuries. And when we got to that and I started reading those things off, I had um, one of those nice uh, full body mirrors. I had one of the guys there hold the mirror up. 
And I had him turn around. I read those things and I yanked the shirt off his head. I said, now, what did I just describe? He said, you just described me. I said, no, I was talking about gun control. And that's what I'm trying to educate you on. You have to understand that they are one in the same. Sorry, I mean, interrupt. But no, it's okay. Go ahead, Walter. No, that was a good point. As soon as I heard you say dark and scary, I'm like, oh, God, here it goes. I know what they're talking about. And, and you're right. And but and also who enacted a lot of those gun laws? Democrats. The Democratic. Yeah, absolutely. The Democrats yeah. Post well, I mean, who was it? Who was it that wanted to uh, keep slavery going? You know, what, what people don't realize is that in the and, and I'm not saying this for anyone in the South that's a Democrat. But I, I mean, obviously, I live in the South and there's lots of like people where I live. You know, I'm living out in the country and they're and they're Democrats. You know why? Because their mama was and their daddy. Yeah, was. exactly. Exactly. And and this is the thing that you have to realize about this whole. It's a weird thing. You know, the Democrats had in the Democratic Party. I can't remember the name of this uh I, b I believe it was a senator, not a congressman, but this guy was in the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he was a Democratic senator until he died. Right. And Clinton said, Hillary Clinton said she he was her mentor. Yeah. yeah. They, these guys eulogized him and all that kind of stuff. And so, and, uh, and listen. Robert Byrd. Robert Byrd. Robert, yeah, exactly. From West so, Virginia. Right. Now, you know, we've got to think about this. You know, we really have to think about these but things. The facts the facts don't get reported or told because it's not part of the narrative. You know, it's yeah. it's not. Well, the truth is always more complicated. That's the problem. The truth is always well, more complicated. Free, than that. Right? The truth will set you free. Yeah. And, right. and, and I think that like what to to go back to what Kevin was saying, this is what's happening right now. They these there's people out there that realize in order to take away guns from us, they have to take away. They have to take away these things. And then at some point they'll go, well, OK, we've gotten rid of all those things. If you know, like I personally don't give a crap about statues. Like Kevin said, I don't know they exist. I don't even see them or whatever. Maybe if, if I do go somewhere like, oh, this is a statue to some Confederate general, I'm like, okay, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, it doesn't, I, would, I would take notice how nicely made they are, actually. Yeah, um, but it's just, you know, to, listen, to be honest with you, if you are a Christian or if you're Jewish, well, that's a, that's if you're a, even Muslim, it's all idolatry. That's it, one thing that that's one thing that you have to realize. It's idols. It's just It's just a thing that's up there, right? It's right. this thing that we create and we can give it power when people feel like it has to be, you know, it has to be erased off the face of the planet. What you're actually doing is giving it power that maybe it shouldn't have, you know. So the thing for me is that I really didn't care about all these things. The reason why it matters is that the, you, you eliminate this thing today, then then you eliminate this, then you eliminate this, then you eliminate. This is how you move someone from here to here. Right, right. Well, what what's next? Who's next? What group is next? What don't you like? I don't like the way you do this. I don't yeah. like the way you do you that. Can always, you can always make a connection to things. Well, and you know, one of the want, things that people, you know, like you said before, everybody's been treated like slaves in this country. The Irish, for example, when the Irish came to like New Orleans and Louisiana and stuff like that, they used the Irish to dig the, the channels because the blacks were too valuable. Yeah. Working well, not, not only were they treated bad here, but the people who came to America came to America because they were treated bad where they were from. They were well, slaves where they were from. The Chinese, the, the the Irish, the blacks, the Italians, all all one time they were on somebody's shit list. Yeah. Everyone who left their country, I don't care. If you came here from England, if you came here from like Norway, I don't give a crap. Why did you leave once there? They, once they got here, the other groups, well, it's the Italians versus the Irish and the, and the this, the that, they all treat each other like crap. Now, a lot of these groups, I guess we'll say, they don't have statues set up for them or it wasn't well anyway it's, you know but anyway everybody's got a story everybody's been treated bad i mean i i you know i don't know what the answer is i i would hate to say you got to get over it because what and when, you know I, and i know i know that's not what you're saying walter i i do embrace my history like hank you seem to be really in touch with yours i embrace my history and where we come from and the strides we took and you know slavery in itself is is a, is a horrible thing and it, it it pains me to even think about it you know because a lot of our generations were lost um and then when you go to when you fast forward to current times i think the thing that really bothers me is that a lot of people don't don't understand the true message behind what's really being put out there and when they get angry you're like you're screaming for you know one thing or another that might be considered on the left side about statues coming down or rules and regulations being changed. What you fail to realize is 
things of that nature, hate cannibalizes itself. It really does. So when I get done with whatever I'm hating, I then have to turn on something else. I gotta go and to it's hate gonna keep else. eating at itself. And that's why I like to tell people, like the one, the one thing, yeah, we should, if you see hate, we should stop it. It's horrible and we should. But I am not going to sit and worry. And I don't mean this as a like some kind of radical statement or anything. But the reason why I'm not sitting worrying about some dudes in um, Virginia walking around with plate carriers on or walking around saying what they're going to do is because unlike slavery days, I have access to everything you have access to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And trust exactly. me, I'm pretty good with it. So I'm not going to sit in fear and worry about what somebody's doing because the cool thing about, I'll go back to it to bring it into gun guys, about the Second Amendment is that it is the physical, it has a physical manifestation of the fact, let me just cut to the chase, you will leave me alone. Despite what you feel, say it over there, use your mouth, nothing else, and we'll all be okay. So that's why I don't run around. I'm really, I'm really surprised nobody's been shot yet. You know, when they came after people and started beating on them, I'm sorry if nobody pulled the gun and shot them. Well, I think that I think that one of the it's things completely legal. It's you know, if you attack me physically, I can pull a gun and shoot your ass right on the spot. So yeah, I think there's a couple of different things that's going on. So I know that when these uh, when the neo Nazis and the skinheads and stuff like that were going at it, they were going they were targeting people. Right, everyone was targeting everyone else. We've seen the videos of all this stuff going on. But I think that both of these groups came from outside of that place yeah. and went in there to fight with each other. There's and they didn't necessarily go in there yet armed to the teeth with guns yeah. and stuff like that. And, you know, it's probably a matter of time before that happens. Well, I mean, just a normal person, a lot of people, yeah. normal, forget about the Nazis. Well, the normal person, the normal person wasn't there. No, no, I mean, no, think about, about it. Forget if, about all the Nazis and the white supremacists. When the mm -hmm. when the other side, the leftists, whatever you want to call them, have attacked people that are that are near their protest or whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. that's what I'm talking about. You're carrying an American flag and they attack you like that woman that they did the other day. She could have pulled out a gun and shot the bastard right there. Yeah, but I think that what what I'm trying to say to you is I think the normal like us, for example, if there's a protest like this going down going on could be downtown of your town, are you going down there? Well, what if you're just driving your car along and you end up in the middle of this protest? And well, then if their, you're if you're bashing so your and they're bashing your windows out, what are you gonna well, do? Yeah, well, it's if you're people it. like us, if you're, you're people like fight. us, yeah, if you're people like us and you get caught up in that and you didn't realize what was going on, and right. you did what you're supposed to do. Sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes yeah. we're not rolling around able to defend ourselves. Well, like you're we running in the car. Yeah, but if you are, if you are able to defend yourself in a situation like that, you absolutely have to defend yourself. Yeah. It's when another person challenges your right to exist. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. I mean, it, it's only a matter of time before some legally carrying gun person cuts loose on some of these people yeah. and shoots three or four. And, and that goes all ways. I mean, a person who is they transgender, a person who's transgender walking down the street has the right to do it. Someone who's gay walking down the street oh. has a right to do it. Yeah. You know, uh, whether you're black, white, if you're Muslim and you're walking down the street, you have the right to do it. When someone else decides that they are going to tread on your right to exist, and, well, and 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 eliminate you, remove you from the planet. That's it, when you know you should defend yourself, right? It could just be a simple. They're gonna beat you down, and yeah, I think that was like um, there was this thing in in uh, New York. I have to look it up because I don't exactly have that on my immediately on my radar. But there was this thing of a of a um, there was an actor. He wasn't like a famous actor or anything like that. But he was in New York City and he was stabbed to death, I believe, because these guys, you know, he looked at these guys wrong. He was like Texan. I've got to pull it up. I'm not sure exactly where it is. I don't have it um, immediately on my thing here. Let me see if it's in. Um, okay, it probably wouldn't be in the firearms blog because they don't talk about politics. <laughs> we found uh, that. <laughs> let me see. Oh yes, it's on the truth about guns because <laughs> they do talk about this kind of stuff. Texan stabbed to death in Brooklyn. Um, it should have been a defensive gun use. And uh, so you guys can look that up in the truth about guns. Basically, and uh, here, let me see. I'll pull this up. So that you guys can, I'll share it in um, in the thing here, so you guys can take a look at that. You know, I will share that with you all in the chat. I don't know if you guys did. You guys hear about this? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
Yeah. So this was like a, a, a they were the couple. They were both. It was a husband and wife, I believe, and they were actors. And they were walking down the street. I guess this guy looked at someone wrong, and they were like, "Who are you looking at?" And he was like, "I'm looking." And then they went after him, and uh, wound up killing him. So, so this is the thing. And in a place like New York, you don't have the you do not have the ability to defend yourself and fight back in situations like this. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about. That's why I bring it up, right? You know, we're supposed to have the right to exist and live and walk down the street in any neighborhood, whether you're a white guy walking in a black neighborhood or a black guy walking in a white neighborhood. This is this is what's really important. This is more important to me than statues. I should have the right to exist and and go go places. And as long as I'm not hurting anyone or trying to take something from someone, I have the right to exist and be there. But you know what the crazy thing about that is? Think about how things come full circle. The people that a lot of people that are really upset about statues, um, whatever they're, they're whatever we're upset about today, right? Because it'll be different next week. Whatever we're upset about today, those people are also a lot of those people are yelling at gun people about being so so up in arms whenever somebody is trying to get rid or infringe upon the Second Amendment. What they don't seem to realize is the Second Amendment is one of the things is giving you the right to even go yell about taking a statue down and make sure you get home safe at night. So you want to be able to remove a statue, but yet you want to disarm people when they want to go to watch or look at the statue. So I can't even go to where the statue is. I can't go see a great monument in New York that you might want to take down, but you also want to disarm me to go look at it. Or maybe I'm coming there to help you and speak on your side. But I get killed on the way there because you also want to disarm me. I don't know what kind of violent utopia people think we live in, but it's just not the way of the world. You want to yell, you want to yell, you want to complain, but nobody wants to do anything to really hold evil at bay. We just want to yell at it thinking it's going to go away. And then when you when you say, hey, I don't know if that's a good idea, all of a sudden you're either you're, you're some kind of negative name. And when you say, hey, well, this is why I believe in the Second Amendment to give you the right. This is why I believe in a flag, because it gives you the right to speak your opinion. And then you're called, you know, I think I, I believe now being called a patriot is a bad name. From what no, I since when? I mean, I just called a patriot. Well, you're just a patriot. I didn't know that was an insult to somebody called me that like four times. I was like, why do you keep saying it? You know, oh, you mean it as an insult? Well, oh, the well. patriots are what's giving you the right to even have an opinion, right? <laughs> I don't know. Let me start it. It's, people just make me upset when you're not understanding how things are coming full circle. Speak yeah. how you feel. To Walter's point, keep your hands to yourself. Speak how you feel. And if you really truly understood what everybody in the middle was saying, you will understand that as long as everybody behaves themselves, you can say what you want to say, speak what you want to speak, protest what you want to protest. But there is something out there that's giving you the God given right to make sure you make it home safe at night. And if somebody tries to intrude upon that, if they don't think you have the right to wake up the next morning, you introduce them to your favorite millimeter of Calvary. <laughs> right? And then yeah. you go home and everybody goes to bed. Yeah. People are getting over themselves and live better lives. Yeah, absolutely. Let me just take a quick second here to remind everyone that's watching. You've got a lot of people watching and, and commenting and stuff like that. I am going to get to some of the comments. Lola just got in here. Yay, Lola. So Lola's in the building right now. So we, we will get a little organized here. I want to remind everyone to like this video. Click the thumbs, the thumbs up on this. Like the video. Uh, definitely share it. Make sure you're subscribed. But very important to share this with your friends and family on social media so we can keep this whole thing building and moving forward. So, uh, Walter, did you want to uh, say something there? Well, to I'm just reading the comments a little bit. And uh, one, we, one, one thing we forgot about walking in neighborhoods is a, a DC2 mega boost uh, or a black man walking in a black neighborhood. And by yeah. the way, six more, six more black people died in, uh, in Chicago last weekend, I think it was. So where's the protest? Unfortunately, uh, I, I'm pretty sure Black Lives Matter doesn't care about the black lives that are destroyed by other black people. But that's what I was saying to you uh, that, you know, that's the metaphor about even the whole situation with slavery and how our ancestors were sold into slavery by our ancestors. <laughs> the, the funny thing is I always say there still is slavery in this country. Let me, you know what? There is. There is. Lo there's lots of forms of slavery. The welfare system. Hold on, I'm going to grab something, see if I still got it. Yeah, well, look, I think, yes, the welfare system is a form of slavery. Um, you know, there's lots of debt. There's an argument that debt is a form of slavery. The yeah. government the government restrictions that we have on us is a form of slavery. Well, when you owe your soul to the company store and this company store is a gov, 
then they take away your guns and they take away this so you stay in the store and you still have to use their store so yeah. allow me to if i could for a second let me let me probe a question to you two guys and also to your audience you ready yep so this is something else i did at the event all right so i'm gonna read through some names i'm gonna go really really fast i don't want to take up a lot of the podcast so audience pay attention you two guys when i say a name you recognize just nod your head or give some wave your hand give some kind of acknowledgement okay and this is going back to the whole blm point right laquan mcdonald okay, okay. freddie gray i've heard that eric gordon sean bell alton sterling terrence crutcher I have a feeling walter scott uh sandra bland Belando castile yeah mike brown yeah. Tamir Rice, Eric Harris, right? Those names, when I did my event, about 94% of people raised their hand, right? Knew the name. Yeah, yeah, we knew. Okay, now when I say these names, so here's the, here's the truth, Peel. When I say these names, and I told them to put context to it, I said the reason why we are so upset about those individuals is because it's not it's not so much what the police did. You know why you're upset about it? Whether you're right or wrong, I'm just gonna deal with the fact you're your right. affinity. I'm gonna guess it's your affinity with it. Well, no, it is. It is the fact because you trust it. You trust a system to protect you, right? You trust the police to protect you. They are the people that you depend on. If I pick up the phone, you got my back. You're gonna come stop bad things from happening to me. If you're driving down the street and somebody's clubbing me over the head, you are there to protect me, right? Okay, now, makes sense. When I say the, so, that's why it hurts because I give, I gave you something. I gave you my trust, and I feel like now you're betraying me. You're hurting me. Right. That's why it's such an emotional outpour. Now, when I say these names, and I'll tell you guys the percentage. Um, Kanari Bowens, Latay White, Takia Holmes, Zanel Trotter, Jaquan Coles, Omari Brown, Chris Palmer, Amante Johnson, Ella Smith, China Kebrew, Deshaun Boner, Autumn Johnson, Jamila Bolden. Dequante William Hobbs Jr. You know what all those names have in common? All those names are kids under the age of 12 years old that were killed in black neighborhoods by other black people. And we give them nothing. We don't march for them. We don't talk about them. We didn't donate money to their families. We did nothing. And you know why it hurts? Why it should hurt so much? Because we shouldn't trust the adults in our community to keep our kids safe. The same damn philosophy we used to be mad at the police is the same philosophy we ought to use to hold people accountable when they hurt our kids. It's the same damn thing. It's the same issue. Yeah. We are holding other adults in law enforcement accountable for what we feel they do wrong, whether they're right or wrong. We feel it, so damn it, I'm going to voice it. But at the same time, we can lose these little kids. One of these kids was killed at his table while working on his iPad eating dinner. Mm -hmm. A stray bullet came through his and, and and we're not mad about it. It doesn't outrage yeah, us. Don't get upset about that, though. No, right? I mean, I I personally am. I mean, and and I think it's um I think it's the point that you know that should be made here. I think it's a very good point that you're making, by the way, Kevin. You know, this is this is what the problem is. You know, this is what the problem is. We this the these are egregious crimes. Horrible yep. things that are happening right now, right now. And some of the people who are responsible for this are actually looked up to as heroes in our society right now. They might not have statues, but they looked up to as heroes. And here's what I mean. I was in a barbershop one day and, um, I, you know, you get into these kind of conversations in the barbershop and there was a guy there. And uh, he said to me, you know what, even in the hood, the drug dealers look out for the, you know, they look out for the community. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? He was like, yeah, you know, they look out, you know, they look out for the community. I was like, yeah, there's no way you cannot convince me that that a drug dealer is looking out for the community. And he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes they have the barbecues and they do this thing. I was like, but what does that matter? If you're in the community selling these drugs to people's mothers, fathers, uncles, sisters, their children. And then in order to get those drugs, they're stealing from their own family members and other people and robbing people and killing people in order to get those drugs. If to defend your territory and all that, you have to kill this kid and kill that kid, then what you're talking is all bullshit. <laughs> That's right. not a community. 
Right. You know, it's not a community. If you, if people really, if like, like people might think that I'm not like pro black or something like that because of my stances, I'm one of the most pro black people you would ever meet. And if you go research Shaka Zulu and figure out what like Shaka Zulu is all about, he refused, he refused to let people come to Africa and take these Africans and make them into slaves and, and sell off his own people. And this is why he was eventually destroyed and removed from the face of the planet. And this is the thing that we're, you know, what we are is a product of people who sold their own people. And this is the same thing that's happening right now. We're selling our own people and we're looking at someone else that did something a long time ago or did this one thing and it was, and it's horrible. And we're going, okay, that's bad, that's terrible, we've got to destroy, crush these people, erase them from the face of the planet. And what we are doing to ourselves is way, way worse, way more destructive, and we're doing it right now. Yeah. And we think it's okay. You, you, you look at, you, to your point, Hank, you're, you're a thousand percent right. And you know, to just, to just do, bring it in for the audience, now I'm not, and let me say this, I am a guy that believes human beings should live. So yeah. when we talk about yeah. Mike Brown, right? That's close to me, that's in St. Louis. I'm I'm 20 minutes from where that happened. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The 18 year old man, mistake or not, I hate that he's he's not with us. You know, he's an 18 year old kid, right? Absolutely. Uh, I've got I've got mistake, a few of those myself. Right. You know, we don't want we don't want to see our kids leave Earth uh, prematurely. Now, with all the things and all the uproar that happened around that situation, right? That was that was dramatic. Saint, we made the news, right? If it wasn't for a World Series or the Rams or Nelly, you never hear about St. Louis. All of a sudden, <laughs> it happens, and, like and Nelly's you, pretty awesome. Okay, go ahead. You do, you know, put us on the map. We, you hear it now. All of a sudden, you hear about us all the time because of the suburb of Ferguson because of an unfortunate incident that transpired, right? Now, mm -hmm. as sad as that was, one of these young ladies, Jamila um, Jamila Bolden, died a block and a half from where Mike Brown died shortly after. You heard nothing, but you know why? Because it didn't fit the narrative. It didn't fit the narrative. He had two kids that died. He was 18, so he was a kid. He had two kids that died. The difference is at her, when she passed away, the Ferguson Police Department, and I'm not saying they are free from doing wrong things because if you're from around here, they have been known to be at minimum very aggressive when it comes to traffic tickets, like overly aggressive at minimum. But the Ferguson officer that responded to that scene was visibly upset he was crying. He had to be removed from the scene. He couldn't take it. He went back, donated to that family, did everything he could to support them. He prayed with that mother. I believe he went to church with them. You heard nothing about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't fit the narrative that we should all hate each other. And that's what I get upset with people. One life loss is as equal as another life loss, right? And if you're going to pay attention to all the things that people are funneling you, like I was totally, totally, totally uh, on the edge when I found out that BLM, it was one thing to hear rumors of George Soros and, and uh, donating until I actually read the statement that he put out that said he actually did, right? And when you look at stuff like that, you look at the fact that we are not doing anything to really support each other, just hey, so yeah, we'll we'll talk about the big names or the, the, the big names that are making the media, but when we have a young girl in her case, she was in her bedroom, laying in her bed doing her homework. Yeah. And some yeah. idiot came down the street shooting and shot her, wasn't even trying to shoot at her house. And shot and killed her. But you know what? We will we'll see Facebook posts saying, free him. Let my man out. We, no, but those are the people we need to crush. Now, hold on a second. Uh, we got Tyvin. Tyvin show. I don't know if don't that's know where we're, we're getting the echo Hello, from. Everybody. No, what's going on, Tyvin? What's up? Uh, hey, you know. uh, I'll mute and I'll go get a headset. I'll be right back. Yeah, okay. Walter, you wanted to make a point? Go ahead. Well, no, what Kevin just said is what I was saying earlier. It's all this is all part of a big a plan that they have to create havoc and 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 distrust and and all that and the people in chicago or the people in new orleans that get killed or the people in st louis that get killed aren't part of that plan so it right. doesn't it doesn't matter to them they're not part of the narrative like you said so who cares what i'm saying the media and stuff they don't care you know because it's not part of the plan that they're part of That's yeah all. Absolutely. But I, mean, I, you know, I agree with you on that. You and also, know. like you said, Kevin, the, the people that live in the, in the neighborhoods need to rise up, I think, I feel, and, and sometimes take care of business their, uh, themselves or, or not feel like they're, they're beholden. Well, they need, the, they need the ability to legally do that. 
well, that's the problem. Yeah, lots, of, lots of these places, they don't have the ability to legally do that. Now, let me do this before we go on. There's a campaign that has started in the chats to uh -oh. permanently bring Kevin on the show. <laughs> and you know i can't argue with you guys at all i mean we we like kevin that's why he's been on uh, several times you know so anytime kevin anytime you're available to come on man you got a spot here you know that right well i'm, I'm definitely game thanks guys. <laughs> yes, but, yeah um, there's lots of love for kevin out there but you know it's good to hear it's i i think it's good for me to hear it other than me i know you're not the only one but you know we have to we have to get out there and say these things and um, I think it's a lot of hypocrisy. I think that's what Walter always gets mad about. And that's what you're mad about. There's a lot of hypocrisy. Yeah. There's two rules. Lots of people feel that there's like rules for this person, but not rules for this person. Well, and look at, look at the Charlottesville thing. Every day goes by, there's more and more weird conspiratorial stuff about that whole thing. That this one let this one do that, and this one let that one do that. And they pushed the groups together on purpose. And you know, it's terrible that woman died, but it's really in the in the big scheme of things. It, it was, you know, I hate to say it, one person versus how many people die every every weekend in this country in the big cities. You know, it, it's yeah. I think it is terrible that she died. I think at the same time, on the flip side of that, it's They're actually amazing. It. It's amazing that more people were not hurt in that whole thing, though. Oh, yeah, that too. More people didn't get killed. I, I've just seen the media making it sound like that was a that was a pivotal moment. But in you know our, what? In our country's history, yeah, and it was is going to go. Into, moment, as horrible as the moment as it was, as horrible as it was, because frankly, I believe that guy should have been drug out that challenger and ran over with his own car. But well, yeah, someone that, should have been there to stop him. You know, that's the moment yeah. I was talking about. But I want to interrogate him first. Him. Right. But when you when you look at it, and I, I hate to say this because I, I'll, I'll reiterate again: all life is valuable. But when you look at it, imagine, just imagine for a second, that young lady, beautiful, uh, you know, beautiful soul. I didn't know her personally, but I'm not going to say anything bad about, about her, right? She died for, for being at something she felt free to speak about. Imagine what that would have been if her skin tone was different. Imagine how big that story would be. Because that story is really not big. But she, imagine well, if her skin tone was different. Well, I, I've said that too. It's, it was... You know, unfortunate. Well, I won't, how do you say this without sounding like mean or something? But once again, that whole that whole Charlottesville thing was was very planned. On, um, I will say, I won't say on both sides, but well, on it was either planned or or so horribly, very, or uh, horribly, horribly mismanaged. If it wasn't planned, I mean, you know, obviously we can get into conspiracy theories and all of that, and and some conspiracies are a hundred percent true. You know, and some are 50% true or different places on the scale, some are 0% true. But if it wasn't planned, it was horribly, horribly mismanaged, right? It was supposed to be that way. Perhaps, but you know, yeah, you, here's you the thing. You, like, don't, you don't plan a peaceful event to get headlines. You plan a very brightest... Yeah, I'm sure. I, I believe that the neo-Nazis, the skinhead dudes that were there, you know, went there to cause trouble. I mean, if you look, if you really look into this, the people who did not want these statues to be removed didn't actually show up there to, to protest because the neo-Nazis took over the whole thing. Right. Because that's actually a separate group, you know, so they took over and they came in there. And then you had other groups like Antifa and uh, BLM and all that that also came. They're like, oh, those guys are going to be there. We're going to go there. So these guys want the fight. These guys want the fight. Everybody gets in there. No, and well, at this point, that really was not an explosion. That was, I, that, I, that, that's not as bad as it could be. I, I was talking mainly about the plan stand down from the police. And that was an official order to stand down. It was something I dreamed up. Um, and the mayor making statements about he wants his town to be the center of the rebellion or something like that i mean you just don't make those statements and then have what happened happen by coincidence right <laughs> you, you you couldn't have planned a better well you could have planned a better you could have killed some more people and on their on their way they think and it would have been more headlines even more but to say it was some kind of pivotal moment in our country's history come on Hello. At some point, though, at some point, it's going to go there, and, and I don't want it to go there because if this fuse ever gets lit in America, what a lot of people don't realize, if this fuse gets lit, there, but you, like, you know, the shit hitting the fan once isn't going to be a good enough description of what would actually happen. 
the media is 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 pumping this um, um, narrative, you know, that the world's coming to an end. The rest of the world's not coming to an end. They could care less what's happening here. Um, you know, I, I don't think most people in this country, if you ride around, if you ride, if, if, the media is pushing it. The, I think the media is pushing it, Walter, because they want us to be so miserable every day when we get up. <laughs> they want us to be so depressed and so angry every day until we when we get up that well, eventually, it, like you know, but, it, like Trump just quits or someone does something Trump's horrible to him. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. saw that there was a there was a Congress, not a congresswoman, oh, that, um, a state oh, senator in, in Missouri. Yeah. In Missouri, yes, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. She wanted Trump assassinated. You know, yeah. that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about when you you get people that say these these things these remarks and you know and then automatically oh, I'm sorry I didn't mean it I, I apologize well you only apologize when you get caught they don't apologize until they get caught you know and then it's then I it's think like, she knew she was gonna get caught but she just said oh, it anyway because she, she was a hero was if you look at if you look at her getting up on stage to apologize and all the people behind her having her back or whatever throw her out. Them, to those to those people she's a hero throw don't, her don't think out. that's the end she'll just come up with something crazy if you let say. her if you let her stay she won yeah. Listen. Okay, we got some time in. Are you set up? Let's let time yeah, in here. Yeah. Can you hear me all right now? Yeah, we can hear you. So what okay, do you no, think about Good deal. We're going on all a right. little bit. What do you think? What do you have to say on all this? You know, if people just wouldn't have racial comments and everybody just hug it out, <laughs> we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> yeah. I just <laughs> aiming and stuff. I always tell everybody, look, don't use any foul language and no racial comments around the world. It's better to be friends and have those people as part of your life, regardless of their race, creed, background, wealthy, poor. It doesn't matter. It's who you know is how far you go and what you know. And knowing everybody from everybody's background just enriches your life. You, Absolutely. You have, you have a common you have a common denominator though in your in the gaming. You have a common interest. Like yes. people, people with guns, a lot of times, you know, I, I'm sure I meet people with guns that have all kinds of different views about things. We don't necessarily delve into all their views that I don't want to hear their views, but we have a common interest. As long as we can talk about that and, and keep it civil, I'm good. So Yeah, also what's yeah, I've seen, I seen Hank playing a prank on you like I'm gonna play I know everything and then he was trying to bust your balls. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, um uh, is it Doxy or Dixie? It N N O C Firearms. Oh, it's Dixie, man. Dixie. Dixie. Just like Dixie Land. Sir. Likewise, sir, how are you? Yes, sir. Thanks for letting me join in, guys. It's an interesting conversation. Um you know, I just wish people would just have a bigger heart. And I mean, it's like when you join the army. There's no black, white, brown, green. Everybody's on the same team. Everybody is together, same team. And if once everybody's on the same page, so much more gets done, even if it's morale, uh, getting the missions done and everything. I just, I just wish people would just have a bigger heart. Going through the chow line goes a lot easier when everybody's going to the same <laughs> Yeah, it's not, you know what, I think it's the golden rule or one of the golden rules that we should just all treat each other like we would like to be treated. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is, it, is the split parenting and there's no more parental control over kids. There's no more, regardless if your religious background, there's no religion in the day they they're not taught the morals and standards right, 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 and right, right. views and compassion and and being dignified and having honor and respect not only from themselves but the people that's around you yeah right. I agree with you. I agree. That's good. You know, and and I think a big part of that to, you know, not to to beat a dead horse, but I think part of that is you should not expect other people to, to automatically to live. respect you. Well, yes, but also you shouldn't expect other people to live up to things that you don't want to live up to. Oh, so okay, okay. What do I, I mean by than your own? <laughs> yeah, well, what I mean by that is like some people, you know, I've heard people saying, well, I can't believe the president is doing this. And I get that. Okay, so you think the president can't do this. Do you do that? 
Well, yes, I do it, but I'm not the president. Well, well yeah, so where are you? How bitter yeah, are you? Yeah, you know, that's the president who shouldn't. No, you know what? We have created this society. It's our fault. It's not like some magical they or the Illuminati or anything like that. It's <laughs> yeah. us. We the are Rockefeller accepting this crap. Right. Yeah. We have rules. Like, other people have to live by the rule. I don't have to live by the rule. That's well, nonsense, you know? That was a problem Hillary Clinton had. I'm <laughs> above the law. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she ain't got caught yet. Oh, it's coming around. I think I think Hillary got caught. The problem is, is that you know when Trump won, he had some kind of meeting. They told him about the aliens and all that other craziness <laughs> oh, that we don't know about, and they were like, "You better behave yourself and stop going after uh, Hillary, or no. we're gonna." I, I got I got news for you, fellas. <laughs> She's still being looked at. Trust me, it ain't over yet for Hills. You know, you know, she done Hillary in. I, you know, and and I'm, you know, it's 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 one of those things. I didn't. I always tell people I stay away from the the pres presidential thing. But there was one thing that Hillary did. I said, should have opened people's eyes. Forget about the super predators comment. Forget about all that stuff. This woman went on the Breakfast Club. I don't know if you guys know what show that is. Yeah, that's uh, a radio. Yeah, show. yeah, syndicated radio show. So it's big. It's got a huge following. She went on there, and this is around the time Beyonce put that song out, Lemonade, the Lemonade song or whatever. And she went on that show and they asked her, you know, kind of a general question. Hey, tell us one thing about you that people would know. Like, you know, one small fun fact. This woman, now mind you, it's a, it's a radio show that's heavily watched by African-Americans. Mm -hmm. This woman, out of her mouth, based off the Beyonce song, went into her southern accent and oh, said, yeah. well, I can make some hot sauce. I can make that. She, <laughs> I see I, I just, I, I'm she gets a, she, like, that wasn't scripted. That wasn't scripted. She, she gets in front of a black audience and tries to talk black. She gets in front of Southern and tries to talk all Southern and shit. And then when she goes up in the Northeast, she just talks like. Okay, I have to go see this because it seems like everyone saw that episode of The Breakfast Club. I think yeah. I'm going to have to go watch it. It made but, national news. Yeah, by the way, I want to shout out Tactical Toolbox is in the building. What's up, Tactical yeah. Toolbox, Jonathan? Very cool dude. We've got to get Jonathan to come back on the show again also. Lots of cool people. You know, um, <laughs> if you see people coming on the show multiple times, it means I like them. For the most part. Right. For the most oh, part. thanks, man. I, I appreciate I the ball roll out. Thanks for I don't want to say, say, I don't want to say give you a group hug. Okay, I don't want to say 100%. I might, like, you know, I might have to meet some people, like, maybe twice. <laughs> and then no, maybe I, we I, never see them again. But <laughs> What I kind of mentioned before was some people think that just because I we talk or we meet or we or whatever, that I'm supposed to all of a sudden, we're supposed to be in love and be friends and all that. And, you know, mm -hmm. you have to, there has to be reasons why you're friends with somebody. Either you have a mutual interest or you're, or you you know, you need something from him and he needs something from you in a, in a normal fashion, not a weird sense. You know, it, whether it's guy, girl or whatever, there's got to be a reason why you become friends. But also, but also why, like, why do we have to pretend to be something that we're not? Well, you know, I mean, that's, know. that's, that's, that's well, just as destructive, right? When I, people it, pretend to be something that they're not. That's true. Everybody yeah. wants a persona of I am one. My voice is bigger than everybody <laughs> yeah. else's. I have social media. I'm going to say what I want to say, and you better believe it. Well, first, you must give respect in okay. order to earn respect. And out of that respect, respect, then you get friendship. Then you get loyalty. Yeah, then you yeah. get honor. Then yeah. you get dignity. Mm -hmm. There's more. There's more. Um, there's more calling for hiring Kevin. Okay, Kevin, <laughs> we'll pay you. We'll pay you exactly zero dollars. Pay me uh, I'll send him a box of Slim Jims, man. We'll be buddies forever. Gyms, I, oh, really? I, love beef, I love beef jerky. Are you Okay, you're into beef jerky. I noticed you also love Doritos. I'm looking at your t-shirt. No, no. Yeah, it's uh, I loved uh, Loco Tacos from Taco Bell. Oh. I'm out with the Dorito Tacos. I had a buddy who was a manager at Taco Bell. I was like, hey, man, I want one of those shirts. Yeah. So let's uh, – let's, Let's switch this a little bit here. You know, let's switch up a little bit here. Um, what happened today, Tyvin? Because I know you were supposed to be testing some guns. Uh -oh. So we're going to we'll talk about guns. Let's talk about guns a little bit. <laughs> yeah, tell me what happened. I'm curious. Hey. Yeah. Um, awesome. My hair vibrated. My ears was just buzzing. My trigger finger was getting all hot and sweaty. I popped off the first five rounds. Uh, um, I posted a picture on Twitter, 
Well, let's uh, uh, we let's dialed it in at 100 yards to try to get a, a. Go ahead. No, let's explain to people what you were shooting. What were you shooting? Okay. Um, we had the upper from Safety Harbor Firearms. It's the AR-15 conversion. I had the um, 18 inch barrel with the magazine fed action 50 cal and my, myself and the wife and the two other guys that helped me do all my gun stuff um, captain obvious and uh, jerry the muffler man um, we went out to a place over in ohio well i'll get on the names later but uh we went out like and um uh, we put muffles. <laughs> sights on it and then uh, everybody got to shoot five rounds and then we went back in for the second rotation the iron sight on the back of it where the it grips the rail and then you tighten it down it broke one for the day oh, so the and sight it was right at the solar eclipse oh cool. well that's the force the force powers got it <laughs> Yeah. You did it. Sacrifice the right amount of chickens. So, <laughs> hell of you. Well, we had four chickens in one. Uh, um, we we we'll call those those little moles that in there in the yard. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't get to the mole. We were one chicken. Guy. So you, you awesome said awesome day. Um, we got to shoot the fifty cal. You go said ahead, you had some. Go ahead, water. You said you had some extraction issues. It was was it the whole time or just a couple times or what? Um, about every third round. I actually think that it was the round and not the the weapon. Okay. Um, after further inspection, the rounds that I've got, you messaged me and said those were not reloads. They're knurling on them. I went and I mic'd them. And there's thirty thousands difference between where the bolt crimps into the case down to the neck. Okay, okay. And we had some problems when it was uh, when you were shooting it. It just ob oblonged or whatever you want to call it in the bore, and we actually had to take a rod through the barrel okay. to get it to go out. Definitely. So yeah. I think I just had cheap generic casing. They were dirty, and honestly, I don't think that they cleaned the case when they reloaded them. Well, you said it was American Eagle, right? Yes, American Eagle, 660 grain. Right. American Eagle in those black boxes is actually, it's not reloads. It's actually seconds off the uh, military production lines. So Okay. Those, well, those... I, I'm not very knowledgeable. I'm just getting back into the gun world and getting in all this stuff. So you guys are huge. Uh, information sponge for me so I'm trying to get everything get back into it I'm not knowledgeable about ammunition and stuff so when so, you had said that I went and looked at it but we had a great day my first five shots and I shot first I had a pattern probably my first shot was dead right in the forehead I scalped him and I had two right above and then um, the wife did really good and Jerry had three rounds within you, a quarter that's, can we make it clear that you were shooting a paper target? <laughs> because, target to look, I, just, yards. I just, I mean, YouTube comes you in here. You hit a chicken at 100 hold on, yards? But, but hold on a second. Yeah, hold I hit a chicken. <laughs> Wait, because YouTube comes in here and looks at this old video. Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Well, our, you last, conversation, our yeah. last conversation, we just got descent. We just got deplanetized. Uh, so, yeah, well, I mean, we're already permanently demonetized, but, you know, we, like, keep our fingers crossed and hope they go through, and in a couple of weeks, they monetize something. So let's just make that clear. YouTube guy watching this, Mr. Censor, Mr. Censor Man. Paper targets. He, he was, yeah, he was shooting at paper. Paper targets. <laughs> yeah, we weren't shooting at people. Kevin, have you ever shot a 50? Yes, sir. I blew up a, a refrigerator in a car with one. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah a refrigerator in what? Uh, refrigerator in a car, and I got to shoot a fifty. Um, um, Jesus, Walter, help me out, man. It's the, it's the is it the, the Mod Deuce? The no, what? the Mod Deuce, the military one. Um, oh, M two. M two, yeah, the Mod Deuce. So I got to, um, yeah, I got to run it uh, out in Utah when I was out doing a TV show last October. I got to run one of those at nine thousand feet elevation at a oh. minivan that they chinooked in and dropped at ten thousand feet above sea level. <laughs> And run this okay. thing from a mile away with tracers. I was like a, a kid, like it was just 
<laughs> it was ridiculous. And then I shot a couple of uh, bolt action 50s. Yeah. That's I, a I big bucket that. list that right there, what you did. Because yeah. <laughs> most people, I've yeah. never done that. Me neither. <laughs> awesome. And what cool. event was this? Um, I did a TV show called uh, Beyond Breaking for uh, Carbon TV last October. Oh, okay. um, and we went out there and did okay. it with uh, Defense Dynamics. And these guys got some toys, man. So we did a pretty deep force on four stuff. Daniel Defense was a big part of it. So we ran some DD rifles and had a good time. And 26 degrees was the high for three days out there at uh, 12 hours a day. Force <laughs> on force. We, we legitimately had to go against two um, MMA fighters who also happened to be recon guys. So, yeah, it was three days of getting beat up, you know. Um, but at the end, we got to celebrate uh. running a Mondeuse at a van a mile away with tracers at 10,000 feet above sea level. So it was pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, Walter um, yeah, Tactical nice. Toolbox says he, he would like to try out a 50 sometime. So we'll have to, I'll have to get you guys to meet. Uh -oh. You know, we can do, we can kind of do, we can get like an ambassador program going. Yeah. Maybe like, you know, you, like Tyvin has a 50 right now. Well, where, where did Tyvin go to? I don't know. Maybe I'm he got, find he got side. I wanted to show you the side I broke. Oh, okay. Oh, it, was that, it, was that, it was that clamp on rear sight you had? Yeah. Okay. Did the gun break it or did somebody smack it? No, um, I was shooting it and it came right up and hit me in the face. Oh, Ooh. ouch. Yeah. It just broke it. I mean, it oh, wasn't okay. hard, but um, the wife got four rounds in and then. How'd she do? Done. How'd your wife she do? She actually did really well. Um, she got about an eight inch spread at 100 yards. Okay. She's never shot iron sights before. She's always yeah. been scopes. That's, that's, that's kind of, and you, the, the iron sights you had probably weren't the. the get it, you, they were sitting kind of high, so you had to get your face up off the. Off the cheek cheek rest yeah. in New York. Is there oh, video yeah. of this or just no picture? no? It was sitting it was sitting on the back of it. Right right right. right. Um, or so it was straight across. Okay. But I haven't shot a fifty cal since ninety six, and I forgot just how much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was artillery man. I shot one hundred fifty five millimeter and eight inch uh, when I was in the army, and you stand yeah. thirty feet away behind the gun. The ground shakes, your vision blurs, oh. your, you can feel it in your chest and your heart, and the smell of gunpowder. <laughs> if they can make a clone out of that, oh, I'd be on it. <laughs> well, you should come down to test fire when I test fire. You get done smell, you smell like burnt gunpowder. So yeah. Now, if you guys want to run some of those cool guns, uh, 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 one of my sponsors is on the 23rd of this month in St. Louis. We are doing a very, very Big shootout with all kind of fun stuff. I want some cars and all kind of stuff. Come on in town. Huh. There you go, Walter. There's the picture. Oh, there you Sorry, go. Kevin. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, you're fine, dude. Yeah, so, so Tyvin's showing that was, uh, everyone who's listening That, that was my first five group right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's Tyvin's the, showing his group. That's the, the, the pink chicken. There we go. Yeah, so there you go. That's proof that it was, it was paper. You got to make sure. Now let me yeah. bring this. Up. Listen, let's get to some. Let's get to some articles. Also, in the truth about guns, because the truth about guns talks about this kind of stuff. Okay. There was this article. Uh, here, I'm going to put it in the thing so everyone could see it. You know, uh, here I'll put it in the chat and I'll put it. Also. Is this about the 16 year old kid that got shot? What what 16 year old? Thing um, on the news tonight about there was an older guy. He was in a uh, gas station convenience store. Mm-hmm got his gun he just got his concealed carry uh, and he was in there and there was a 16 year old kid it was in there trying to rob the place okay. and the guy put the kid put the gun in the guy's face in his back and lower back and whatever and the guy's like you know just leave me alone dude go do whatever you, you want to rob a store go leave whatever just leave me alone i'll go over here you know trying to avoid the whole situation and the kid kept pressing him and the guy turned around, grabbed it right out of his thing, and shot him right in the stomach. And he's like, look, I didn't want to shoot to kill the kid. I just wanted to, <laughs> you know, you're doing something wrong, and you threatened me with a gun. Mm -hmm. Shot not to kill him. I shot him so, you know, he can survive and know what he did was wrong. He's in the hospital. Okay. So, so fortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, fortunately, no, that, no, that was, you know, that was uh, – 
I haven't seen that pop up yet. We have to look and see if we can find any info on that. Fortunately, you're saying for that kid, he survived that whole thing, right? Yeah. yeah Hopefully that sets him straight. Yeah, maybe that'll set him straight in his life, but who knows? Definitely the guy did what he needed to, you know, what he needed to do. In, yep. in my opinion, from hearing the story, we have to see how that unfolds. Yeah. Now, what I was talking about is a little closer to home. The article that I put up, you guys will see that. Basically, it's in the Truth About Guns, and the title is YouTube Excludes Gun Control Channels from Censorship. So what? it's talking about how, you know, so in other words, as we, I'll read the article. As we reported, YouTube has instituted a new policy for firearms related content. All gun videos are automatically restricted and thus demonetized and delisted by their search engine until a YouTube censor, the guy who's listening to this or watching it right now, whoever hey, you YouTube are, censor. yeah, the YouTube censor views and approves them, a process that can take up to seven days. Well, not all <laughs> firearms related content. The NRA's ad-free videos are not restricted, i.e. they're not removed from view or search when a user switches to restricted mode. This may have to do with the fact that the NRA spends tens of thousands of dollars advertising on YouTube or YouTube owner Google's reluctance to tangle with the five million strong gun rights group, also excluded from the automatic firearms related contact delisting process, you know, ad free videos by the, um, the, the uh, Brady campaign to prevent gun violence, every town for gun safety, and their subsidiary Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. They have not been excluded. Yeah, so that said, switching well, on restricted mode does exclude some of their videos, but only a relative few, and the channels are available in search in restricted mode. So, so basically what, I mean, you know, this is like a deliberate campaign. I think, uh, I don't think you can deny it at this point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a deliberate can campaign to There's section a of the that. Go ahead. What okay. you I said there's a way around that. What it is is Google, Google uh, does voice recognition. So if you say keywords, blah, 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 whatever, when you do your live stream, put your live stream underneath gaming, and it bypasses those specific words, because gaming, call of duty, guns, yeah, type, ammo, okay, headshot, keywords like that. Don't, don't, you're gonna sit there right. Oh, you're right. watching this. Yeah. <laughs> don't tell the censor, oh. dude. No, this is secret stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just messing you're with going you. Going to the poorhouse, Hank Strange. Ain't no doubt about yeah, it. I mean, yeah, I Yeah, the censor dude has me now. He's like anything yeah. that Hank Strange puts up. Just My website will be down it. tomorrow, probably. It'll be a whole mess. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. You know, there's so many things. I mean, in my list, of, like, you're one of my sponsors, Safety Harbor Firearms. Yeah. Once that goes in there, like, oh. My son brought up a, my son brought up a good thing, and, and I didn't think about it too much, is, um, you know, all the stuff with Google and the guns and all that. Google also basically runs the Internet. They control yeah. a lot of the actual yeah. lines and the stuff. So not only... Yeah, you don't have a choice where you can go. You can't. You can go to the full thirty or go whatever. But if they decide they want to dump full thirty, they just they just squeeze the line down so people don't see full thirty. Maybe, you know. Yeah, there's a there's a so lot of different. It? I mean, I I think that um, isn't that a monopoly? Uh, yes, to some extent. I mean, what they control is search. So if people like the number one search engine is Google, right? So if people are searching for a video on there, they can control that. But if they I, control, if they control the physical um, equipment and the stuff that it goes through, yeah, you're talking about the servers and things like that. Yeah, yeah the physical own, they hardware. Yeah, yeah it, they don't own all of them, but they do own, they own a lot. <laughs> there's, there's some, yeah, like Google, Amazon is also pretty big because right. you know Amazon has massive servers eBay um, and all these other ones that yeah, net, uh, I think Netflix uses Amazon service. That's how big Amazon is. So, so you know, if they, if they don't want you to see your stuff, they just put the squeeze on it, or tune it, or turn it down, or how they do it. I mean, there's a ways around it. I mean, obviously, I don't believe that my Facebook page gets the the views that it really probably has. I think I, I just don't see it. I, I think yeah. they limit the the audience. Yeah. W what do you think? When Before, you go ahead, go ahead. When you advertise on Facebook. 
Walter, uh, <laughs> you always get that message that says boost your post or whatever oh, yeah. for $30. Yeah. Facebook only goes out to 150 miles from where you live. Even if you set it up to worldwide or national or whatever, it's 150 miles from your house. It only goes any further. Like, I'm in Ohio. Okay, I share it. Well, then you're going to get out of work. Other than that, you're not. Right. Um, I was actually going to ask you guys about what you think about. When you guys set your live streams and you're doing your stuff, what, go ahead and just click that button in your settings that says 18 and plus, And then just go find your sponsors and what you need. Run your Patreon account. Just totally make your videos all non-ad. And then once the NRA doesn't have any channels for them to run their ads on because all the YouTubers switched off. it to 18 and above, they're not putting any ads on your page at all anyhow. So just cut them all off. Yeah, that's a, you know, that's maybe not a bad point. Uh, what do you think about all this, Kevin? I think that it sucks um, for me <laughs> being behind the scenes for so so long and just doing stuff kind of off of social media um, when I decided to start social media what a year a year and some change ago uh, start doing it I started looking at it and right when I'm like all right I'm gonna put out these YouTube videos and do things like that and I look at guys like um, Iraq guys like you and uh, Mac and you start looking at these channels and you know you used to be able to drop a video on YouTube and within a let's call it two days there are you know thousands of views right like thousands of views right and now you go to them you can watch some great content good quality video same stuff you used to see for some of the bigger names and it's like 300 400 500 and you know that people are still looking for the content but now it's only people that actually know that you're there they can go directly yeah hey, I'm looking for this person and see what they um, so I think that they are they are doing their job because that's kind of what they want to do, you know, follow the pressure. Um, I just hope we can find a way around it. I kind of do more of my stuff on Facebook now and I'm starting to really, really mess around with Instagram. Uh, I will start dumping a lot of videos on YouTube, uh, but uh, that's only because I want people to go out. And I'm doing a series called The New Shooters Library. Hopefully enough people just go watch it. It probably won't get thousands and thousands of views, but it's just helping new shooters out. But YouTube and Amazon and Netflix and all these other people, if they can't, if they see a way that they can, their pockets are going to be hurt, they are going to fight against you. Because imagine if people said, hey, I will pay for a subscription to Google if you will give me all gun content. Like, Google will be the most gun-friendly thing in the world. But, yeah. because, uh, uh, but, th but that's maybe, but that, you know, I think, I don't listen, know. <laughs> I think that what people should do is focus on, what I'm trying to do is focus on being a, a good content creator. Right. And um, and just still putting out our stuff and trying to figure out ways like we're trying to do that. We're trying to, you know, like we've got sponsors like Walter and other folks out there. We, you know, we we're on Patreon. We're trying to do some affiliate links. You know, we're trying to do full 30. It's not it's not that easy. You know, I think that you focus on that. You 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 stay in the game. You focus on being a good content creator. And then also, I think opportunities will open up. Because these people, they're not just doing it to gun guys. They're doing it to lots of people, yeah. you know, and yeah, so that might open up the board. Yeah, yeah. So that might open up some opportunities where um, someone or a conglomeration of people get together and find an alternative. The thing is, is that people have tried to do the alternative thing before. And it's kind of, you know what, it's, it's very similar to me in um, like, uh, you know, the want to have vehicles that are fuel efficient versus the price of gas, right? So if the price of gas is really cheap, you know, no one gives a crap. They're gonna, I'm, you know, I don't care if the, my vehicle gets five miles per gallon, but if gas is expensive, then people all of a sudden are like, wait a second. You know, then they start That's caring they about the Hummer. The fuel. Yeah, people start caring about the fuel efficiency of something. Not saying I agree with that. I mean, you know. But it's the reality of how we are when things when we're on the pressure, like we were saying earlier, that's what, you know, uh, pressure bust pipes or it makes diamonds. Right. Right. So that's the thing. You have to figure out which one of those are you. Are you a pipe that's going to burst or are you a diamond that's going to shine? So, hey, I got a pressure. question. For you. 
because I, I never, never got a direct answer to this question. I, I never asked you either, so I'm not saying you didn't give me a direct answer. Um, and so I, it's, it's kind of a two part. One, let me make a statement for anybody that's thinking about creating content that might be watching this now, or you know, a guy is like, I got two videos lined up, but this conversation is scaring me. I had a guy <laughs> ask me when I was doing an Instagram live feed. He asked me, how in the world do you have less than a thousand people on your Instagram but four corporate sponsors? Because I do it from the heart, period. You know, I get out and I don't do it for the sponsorships. If I like a product and we can make a relationship, awesome. But I do everything from the heart. I don't count numbers and neither do they. If people know that you're doing the right thing, they'll back you. Um, and then there's going to be a full circle. One day we'll be laughing at this conversation. Um, right. Two, when it comes to being demonetized, and here's a question for you. How much money are we talking about? Because I, I didn't well, get anything that you were making money. Well, what did a good video make from YouTube? Like, what was what were those checks like on a good I, month? I've I've never gotten uh, I've never gotten a check for over six hundred dollars in a month ever. And, and I've been doing this for like um, I've been doing this for um, I don't know going f between four and five years. And we have something, we have over 600 videos that are on YouTube. Now, like you were saying, you got into this a little bit late. Four, four or five years ago was a little bit late, to be honest with you. And so this maybe is the change in the system that's happening, and, and maybe it'll be different going forward from here. But no, uh, me personally, we never made a lot of money from uh, advertising on YouTube. It's, uh, you know, it helps us buy a couple of boxes of bullets and stuff like that. You know, but imagine having, you know, it's like Eddie Murphy said a long time ago, you know, if you've got $50 million and someone takes half, it hurts. If you've got $20 in your pocket and someone comes up and takes $10 from you, it still hurts. So that's, you know, that's the thing. I think that's tough. For, me, for us personally, we've always tried to do this, uh, you know, and be op open and honest with everyone. Just like you were saying, you know, I tell everyone that I'm sponsored by Safety Harbor Firearms that Walter's the owner of. Uh, Walter and I, we, we actually have a friendship. I, you know, I did things, made videos and all that kind of stuff uh, with him way before he, uh, you know, yeah. came on board and helped us out. And that's how, and, and everyone that we're dealing with, that's how we do what we're doing. I'm, I'm always open and honest with people. You know, Patreon, I probably even got into the Patreon thing a little bit late, but we're trying to do it because it's the way that the world is now. You know, and we're even trying to do affiliate things like the thing that we have going on with Primary Arms. That's an affiliate link, you know, and, and what it does is that if people want to support us, they can go buy a, an optic or something from them through the links that we have. And, you know, Primary Arms will send us a, like a little percentage of that. But what the person gets out of it is they get free shipping or the mounts or the scope rings and things like that. And that's just a new norm of what's happening now. But me versus those guys that are so much bigger, you know, it's a completely different thing because I only came into this about four years ago. And those guys started maybe 10, 12 years ago. And you know, yeah. you know, the big ones, the, the big, big ones are, are feeling the, 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 the squeeze. It's more painful. Yeah, it's a yeah, lot big, more painful for them. Because a lot of those guys are living off that. Yes, exactly. You know, and there's multiple people that are hired. Like if you, you know, I don't want to speak for any specific channel out there, but if you're a big channel and you, you have multiple people. Doing your editing, yeah. someone taking your, taking, doing the video. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's a full-time job. I mean, what I'm doing is, a, is multiple full-time jobs. Lola works a full-time job and then does this, you know, so it's, um, it's tough, but I, I think some of those bigger guys will switch over and in some cases it'll be easier for them to switch over and do things. In some cases it won't be just based on the mentality. But right. this is the new norm that we have to live with. And uh, you know, like I was talking to G-Webs about this and I think the thing is is that we, we shouldn't just like lay here and take it. I think we have to kind of like jujitsu or whatever it is. Which, wh which one of those martial arts do you take the person attacking you's energy? Use their, use their energy against them? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think we need well, to do that. Like I said, I that I, I said, use use all of them as much as you can, as hard as you can, whatever way you can, right now. Yeah, you know, and take advantage of it. I mean, you know, they won't. I can't advertise on Facebook. <laughs> as soon as they see firearm or gun, we're done, or a picture of anything that even resembles it. You know, so and I have a bad name. It's called Safety Over Firearm. So yeah. I, I kind of shot myself in the foot there, but. Hey, Chris. Chris B says it's Aikido. Well, I think some of the companies are now realizing that it's actually cheaper to go straight to the company. 
creator than it is to actually go to Google ads or whatever. Yeah. yeah I mean, we, now, we, you, 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 we, we snuck one through on a, on Facebook a couple years ago. We did a black Friday special or I actually sold 50 caliber rifles and we did an ad that had pictures <laughs> of the gun. They had Christmas paper background. It, it went up and we sold 35, 40 rifles from that ad and, and spent, $110, $120 <laughs> uh, good. just by hitting the button and, you know, just keep putting it back out there at 10, $15 a, a, a bunch. And th they got through the, they got through their process. And in the following year, I tried to do it again. And yet they caught up to you. Nope, 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 nope. We didn't get none of that money. So they pissed off. So, so let me ask, let me ask this question. And Walter, you probably have a lot of insight on this too. And Tyvin, maybe you do. I know you said you're just getting back in the guns and Hank. So I'll pose the question to the panel. Okay. Um, have you guys in general found it easier since, you know, the downturn of the industry, so to speak, recently, along with the whole YouTube with uh, demonetizing the videos? Are you finding it easier to have m direct conversations with uh, the manufacturers and or the uh, producers of, say, lights or sites or whatever after accessories to the guns? Are you finding it easier now to have those conversations than, say, three years ago? Oh, because they were busy and they didn't care about you? Uh, something like that. Uh, I, I don't deal too much with the light people and, and, you know, and scope people and stuff like that on a direct basis. I see there's a lot more deals out there than there used to be, just seeing the stuff that's out there and a lot more giveaways like, hey, you buy this, you get that with it. You know, they didn't do that before. They didn't give you free magazines. They didn't give you, you know, all these things to entice you to buy that, that rifle, that pistol or whatever. So in that respect, I guess there is. So, you know, uh, Tyvin, did you want to um – Comment on this? Um, it, on the money aspect of it, video has been demonetized. Uh, but like I said, I did gaming and then online, like Call of Duty, Battlefield, GTA 5, where the guns and everything was already like on my channel, so they kind of like and oh, okay. around. Okay. Um, a lot of the stuff also, like, I'll use PSF Russia uh, as an example. He has an NCN, which an NCN is the my channel network. Depending on which one you get or you choose or you contract to, um, NCNs can actually give you a higher CPM, different things that you can request as part of your contract, if you have an NCN, because they'll actually have guys like Walter that will contact uh, a company like that and say, hey, I've got $10,000. I would like to put $5 for every thousand views. There's a way to do it in Google on how you want your ads perceived to the public. That was one of the biggest things that was going around that people didn't realize. And GM cars were showing up on ISIS videos is because the person that worked at GM went to Google and said, okay, we want to run ads, but they didn't take enough time and the initiative to actually go through and say, okay, ads on a cooking show. We don't want GM ads on a uh, female uh, cleanliness products. The beheading. There's a whole category that when you go and you run your ads, and a lot of guys didn't do that, well, it flowed over and ended up on the ISIS uh, videos. But when I first met Hank, I was like, hey, um, I would reach out to companies, and I'd be like, hey, my name is Tim, this YouTube channel, and I really like your product. I'm not asking you for a free product. I would like to get it at maybe a dealer's cost or something like that because give me. I'm not that type of person that says, gimme, 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 gimme. Look, I'll do you right. I'll pay for your product. Send it to me. I'll do a review anything free click <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> I called a couple of the other companies that was because I was getting back into the guns and stuff. I was like, look, uh, I like your product and I want to use it. Can you give me like a 5% discount? Do you guys offer discounts for vets? I'll pay for the product anything at this time. And I don't never understood that because I'm not asking for free product. But I think more and more of the companies are finally realizing that, that Google AdSense is a joke and they can actually get more exposure by going straight to the content creator and then saying, okay, I will have this contract and this, and then you have the link, whatever, you file the contract. But here lately, I think that it's really coming around and a lot of companies are realizing because when I was doing the gaming, headset, keyboards, joysticks, um, I use XSplit software. They work with me and I get a 10% discount on that. Companies are starting to realize that cable TV is dead. They're going straight to the people because one person with a voice, regardless if that person's up on their high horse, they can make a difference. And it is a social activity because the spread of word by mouth from friend to friend to friend to family member, family member, friend, friend, it gets around and it gets around pretty quick. Yeah. So right. I'm going to start just demonetizing all my videos. I do everything for free now, but I used to make anywhere between two and $3,000 a month on YouTube and it dropped, fell out on her thing and I'm just going to continue on and I have fun. If a company says, hey, we like this guy, we like what he does, hey, shoot me an email. And then like Hank, I met him, which I met Walter. I'd like to do this. Would you like to work together? So it's more of a personal basis when you're dealing from the actual individuals. And I think that's going to start taking a foothold with all this stuff that's going on. Yeah, you know what, Tyvin? Your I think your yeah your audio is lagging really bad, but you, I, um, Tyvin is making a good point. Um, yeah. Are you there? Yeah, we're here. You're just lagging a little badly. Yeah, that's Hello? cool. So yeah, here's the here's my answer to that, uh, Kevin. I think um, you know it's down. It's, Nobody hear me? Oh. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. I think that um, you know I think the thing that's uh, Nobody hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you, hear you, Tyvin. You loud and clear. Yeah. Roger, Roger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. So here's the thing. I think that this is a lot like the okay. Wild Wild West right now. It still is, even though, you know, this has been going on for a long time. So I think okay. a lot of this is variable, and, and, it, and it really depends on each individual person. The most important thing is, do, do you have an audience? Do you have a following? Well, how do you get an audience, and how do you get people to follow you? I think people can smell if you're not genuine, if you're not real, if this is not really you. So I right. think the, the, the most important thing is you should be yourself. Uh, doing what I do, there's lots of people that tell me, hey, if you shave off that crazy, <laughs> get rid of the mohawk thing on your hair or whatever, know, you know, we'll, not you. Yeah, we'll do this thing or we'll do that thing. If you act like this or talk like this, I don't believe in that. No. So I'm just being myself and... Um, and trying to, to me, it's important to be able to look myself in the mirror, go to sleep at night, you know, be able to live with who I am and what I'm doing. And I think that in time, all these things will come together and people will realize like, okay, this guy is our kind of guy. We want to go in there and help him out. That's what's happened with Walter and the other companies that we're dealing with right now. And that's what's happened with the people who look out for us on Patreon. There's lots of good people on there who, re who like what we do. And they support it. And I think that, um, you know, that's the way that you and anyone else doing this should really go about it. Because like anything in life, if your number one driving factor of you doing something's money, well, you're going to have problems. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it doesn't. Well, yeah, okay. No, you want, uh, no I, I'm, a hundred, I'm a capitalist. I believe in making yeah. money and all that kind of stuff. But if that overrides everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you get, well, do you think, now, this is a crazy thought. 
You think Google demonetizing these people is, is a greed issue on their part? They just want more jack for themselves? Um, I think it's complicated. Uh, we, we, I think Tyvon's trying to say something, but I think what's happening is that, that Google and YouTube made deals with uh, some of these big networks and they're losing to people like us. You know, realize that people would rather turn to us than turn to them. Well, I mean, what do you yep. do? A lot of people spend their time just on the internet surfing around, looking at videos, you know, yep. doing this, that, and the other, instead of going to that boring television feed yep. where you got to hear some leftist actor. Dying. Dying. Yeah, I yeah. Don't know. So I think I think that's what's going on, and they realize that. So what they're trying to do is discourage people from being creative and from doing this. That's what I think a lot of this is, yeah. you yeah. know. And and what I'm saying is, don't get discouraged. It, everything will keep changing and just keep adapting as it always has. You know, yeah. just keep your intent. I mean, you look, know? look what's happened to the print media just in the last few years. It's it's basically collapsed. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, and I. I you know, it's just you know, uh, newspapers were going for a long time, and now magazines on the same route. You know, it's just yeah, you know, just it's falling on themselves. Right. So, What's that thing in the Bible? The old order should give, should pass, and give place to the new. Less one yeah. good custom should corrupt the world. <laughs> just make sure the new order is a real in some kind of. I think I think I forgot who drummed that into my head. It's probably my mom. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. that's a, that's a Bible. You got to do your heart, and you also got to be bold. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you got to be bold. And a lot of guys that I know are trying to do it. You know, I've even told them, like, man, I don't, I don't pretend to know the secret sauce, but you know, I, I do, I do have a lot of initiative, and I'll, I'll sit back and scheme of a plan real quick. Uh, so I was able to go to NRA show and tell Hank Strange we're in stand still for we can talk, right? So Strat Kevin's a strategist. Yeah, you got to, you got to sit back and look at something and really be methodical about it. And how you approach it from every angle and think about playing a b c d e and on down the line right, um, right. so yeah I, I would hate to see guys get discouraged because i believe there are a lot of great people with some cool stuff to say um but i've, I've seen several of them myself be like you know what man i'm not doing it. i'm like all right and then they're like how, how in the world are you on nra tv how are you doing tv shows why are you in vegas i'm like well because you went home and i didn't you know and that's the difference exactly you, really gotta, you know you really got to keep pushing and going through um, and find your niche too. I think a lot of times guys don't understand with this, even if you were like doing TV production, like serious work, you got to understand there is a niche you got to work. There's something that has to be not something you got to make up, but you know, kind of, um, I don't know, kind of, it's called it's, dedication uh, what's it and hard work. Yeah. And it's, uh, you have to, you have to put an emphasis on exactly what it is that's special about you. And a lot of yeah. times people forget to do that. Like anybody can pick up this. This is a bottle of water drink it. it'll you keep know, you right? alive <laughs> right but what about you makes people believe that this bottle of water is awesome? this bottle of water is special and well because so, i have it right and you people need it because i have it yeah human beings um the what we do is we buy the person we don't buy the thing so i think that's the thing by the way folks let me say the real cujo my friend sean is just 50 dollars 50 bucks to the cause for the ammo. Oh, thank you, real awesome. Cujo out there, Sean. Awesome, yeah. That's uh, that's our friend Sean. He's always been supportive and all that kind of stuff. And you know, that's what brings me to the thing. Like, I think you know, we just have to figure yeah, out how to do this. Good. Yeah, I think we have to like not give up, keep moving forward. I think what they're trying to do is discourage us. We have yeah. to try to get together where we can and work with each other. And and uh, sometimes when you help other people, you help yourself. Most of the times, actually, I shouldn't say sometimes. Whenever you're out there helping other people, you help yourself, and I think that's what a lot of people don't. Yeah, that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like you know, um, for me, what the reason why I'm doing this is because I realized in the years I've been doing this, I haven't made a, a, any kind of money, but I met a lot of people, and I was like, you know what? I'm always talking to Walter and I. We talk for hours sometimes, and we don't make gun videos because we're talking. And the other people that were having this conversation, that's why I'm doing this, to share the conversations that I have with those people. Right. You know, and, and maybe it'll be something, maybe it won't, you know? Yeah. What state are you in, Kevin? I'm in Missouri. Now, okay, so when was the last time you talked about uh, kindness, Hank? When was the last time you guys been out in public and went to a restaurant or Walmart or your pharmacy or whatever? And what we held the door open for you or said 
good day or how are you doing? I don't even do that, that anymore. You, you know, it, I, I will I be. I'm doing for women all the time, I think. So thank you very much. We get. We, hey, are you we saying that we're more women? prominent down south, but you don't see that stuff up on the East Coast? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, that's just something I do. You know, it's not. I, it, it ain't like you got to be special. Not as long as you're not like grumpy or something. I'll hold the door for you. Yeah. I don't care. I'll, yeah, I'll, we do it all the time. We yeah, I'll hold the door open for men, women. It doesn't matter. Yeah, if if yeah, I see yeah, another yeah. person, I'll open the door for them. Yeah, Walter yeah, oh, only yeah. holds it open for the women. Though. Oh, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> you lie. You big story. Yeah. What were you going to say, Kevin? <laughs> um, here, we, we, you know, it, it kind of goes back. I do it, you know, and I even teach my son to do it. My son will, will he, he yes, ma'ams, yes, sirs. Everybody holds the door after you. You know, he'll run to a door in front of a crowd. We don't know to hold the door open for everybody. Um, and, and so we do it now every now and then you you know you always get that person that walks through the door like you're supposed to hold it open for them you know kind of yeah. with that that aura about themselves like yeah that's what you yeah. better do sure you know that right. kind of thing but no yeah. we we practice it man because i always say that if you can drop um one pebble of uh niceness in somebody's day you can cause a ripple in the pond so uh we we try to yes, walk by people compliment them we try to have some hospitality um you know so we do it we do it I I'm think really that I, open carrying the guns. I hope they do a really wide open for them. Yeah, I think that this whole thing that's happening with us in society, a lot of it, it's, it's not all coming from the media, but a big part of it. Right. And we're allowing it to happen. People don't even signal and they're driving their cars. They don't even freaking <laughs> signal that they're going to make a turn anymore. Not for what? You ought to just know what they're doing. And, and I'll also run you off the road to keep you from merging in front of me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, I'd like, rather run you off the road and risk 10 lives then then let's let you over in front of me. Why would I do yeah. that? Yeah, it's so crazy, you know. Like uh That's <laughs> California. You, yeah. California. It's, it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. I don't think yeah, it's yeah. a place. I think it's a state of mind that we have that um yeah, you, you know. A lot of people are mad at as I say they're mad at they're mad at the world, you know. For no reason besides they just got nothing else to do but be mad. So Yeah. Um, I you know, sometimes like when I'm driving, I see people doing this. Um I see someone who's in a rush, and I could tell from the way they're driving there in a rush. I just ease back and let them go. But what's happening is that the people now they see someone's in a rush, and they now they get into a rush. Before they weren't in a rush, now they see this other guy. They're like, "Wait, he's going to get something before me. I'm going to." So then they and this is the kind of thing that's messing up our mentality. You know, yeah. get ease back. That guy's in a rush for some reason. He's going to get himself into trouble. Don't make this a perfect storm that you both get into the craziness, yeah. you know, but we, you know, we're just living in this kind of society now, I think. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but we shouldn't, we should not succumb to it. We should not allow You're ourselves to, uh, to go down. What's going on, Tyvin? You trying to introduce us to someone? <laughs> oh, five chairs. You want to say hello? Well, hello, yeah, hey, Mike. Water as well. How are you? Hey, how you doing? I can't hear you, but I do want to say I truly enjoyed that guy. What was that, Tyvin? <laughs> you really enjoy shooting the fifty cal today, and oh, thank excellent. you to Walter. Oh, excellent. sweet, awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. cool. You know, what was so what, do you, how, what do you think of the recoil? I mean, honestly, if you you know once you once you had the first round off and you shot the second one, what do you com what do you compare it to? <laughs> It didn't kick as nowhere near as bad as what I thought it would, honestly. It was more of just of a bump. And I went and got my 3030 out because we was at a thousand yards. I wanted to see how it did. My 3030 kicked more than that 50 did. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, happy. A, it's one no, the, the, the funny the funny part is it's usually the big, big guys are the biggest chickens. So you get the real big husky guy. <laughs> What are you trying to say, Walter? <laughs> and he goes, that must hurt bad. You must use reduced loads on your shooting because it doesn't look like it's kicking any. I said, it don't hurt bad. Come on. I got 100-pound kids shoot it before. Yeah, you, know? you get a lot of concussion on the sides of it. Yeah, you get the side blast. Yeah, yeah. But if you're behind it, no. Yeah. It's not it's so that's bad. what got me was I was really losing it when we were shooting it. But the blast from the muzzle brake, I mean, it, it went around you but it gets and the everything on the side. But And that pad that you got on there, it was perfect for it. I mean, it was a glorious weapon. But we didn't lay down and shoot it. We shot it off of a bench. Oh, it's a bench. Okay, yeah. All right. Hey, how'd, your, uh, how'd that, um, that 
bipod you use work out? Did it stay up or did it collapse? It stayed up. I never had okay. any problem with it. My wife was concerned the legs it would To the left, it didn't bounce to the right, it didn't bounce up. We shot it, it had a little bit of a, a of a but so let me no ask you, did you, shoot, at did you all. shoot video? I know you didn't have Wi-Fi out there to transmit it. Did you, did you shoot video, though? Yeah, okay. I've got video. It's going to take me a day and a half or so to uh, get it edited. I've got an appointment tomorrow, and then we're going to go to the range again um, Wednesday for another deal that I've got going on. But honestly, for the money that that upper costs and the conversion for it, way to go and if you want a 50 cal and it's not going to break your shoulder because uh, i've shot the military uh, 50s i've shot the barracks and other manufacturers this is the way to go and for the price you really can't awesome um you see i'm just letting tyvon talk walter because i know no i'm i'm, I'm listening yeah. <laughs> that makes you happy how many subscribers you got tyvon <laughs> Uh, uh, 75,000, like 7,500 or something like that. Yeah. Now, 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 here, here we go. Here's a perfect example. For me to get exposure, possible exposure with 75,000 people, they could be in places you can't own it either. You know, they could be in Saudi Arabia or, you know, Mexico. Yeah, I've got people. People from all around it follows yeah. me because I do the GTA you can, stuff. You can own it in those places. It, it's 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 hard to get that kind of exposure in a magazine. Right. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. you get, you get it now. Like, here, here's the thing, Walter. I'm going to sign that the Tyvin show. I got a buddy named Hank. He's willing to pay for about two thousand dollars for that because it's signed. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that off air again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, not me. That's not Hank Strange, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, much? listen. Kevin wants to know. Um, Kevin wants to know how much the uh, upper that goes on the AR-15 lower costs, Walter. The one I sent. The one I sent the Tyven. The one I sent the Tyven magazine fed eighteen is eighteen fifty. Eighteen fifty. If you go twenty nine inch, it's a. Uh, Two thousand. Okay. If you go single shot, they start at fourteen fifty, and if you go twenty nine inch single shot, they're fifteen fifty. Cool. So awesome. Yeah, that's the, that's mm -hmm. the lowdown, and that's the standard scope rail. If you get anything special, bipod stocks, that's all extra. Okay. Very cool. All right. So I'm going to wrap this up, um, Tyvin. I'm going to let you. Is there something you want to promote? I'm going to wrap it uh, up. Yeah, check out right Safety too. Harbor Firearms. Get your 50 cal today. Well worth the money. There you go. Straight, straight from the Tyvin show. I will double that, what Tyvin said. <laughs> Get your 50 cal today <laughs> from Safety Harbor Firearms. <laughs> okay, uh, Walter's doubling down on that. Okay, Kevin. We'll double down on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, yeah. Are you gonna like, are you gonna triple down, Kevin? <laughs> you know what? I like Walter. You know what? Everybody go support, like, and spend all your money. All your child support money, all your EBT for the family, oh, your school, I mean, and everything with Safety Harbor Firearms. No, I don't. Don't I don't. I can't take an EBT card. No. Don't take the don't take no, the no, milk from the sell, babies. You sell, no. the the, you sell what's on the card for cash, and then you take. Oh, that stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I'm just I saying. Know, <laughs> I know the routine, but we don't do that. That's anyway. called that's called making it rain in the hood. Well, spend that man, Obama money. If the man's listening, that might be. How about money. this, Walter? Yes, sir. I'll sign it. You send it over to Hank. Have Hank shoot it and sign it, and then send it over to Kevin. Have him shoot it and sign it, and do a big raffle. Hey, that'll work. I'm, I'm game. Oh, yeah, that sounds. Hey, like that was easy, right? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I, I do have a fail here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, yes. Kevin. What? It, yeah, for real now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean for real. Everybody support Walter. Um, but Thank I will you. say, um, I'm going to be at. Uh, stay tuned for a few releases from uh, NRA Carry Guard at the end of the week. I'll be up there in Milwaukee, uh, hanging out with a couple of good people. I got um, I'll be on um, I'm doing the rest of the filming. I'll be on season six of the Noir show on NRA TV. Um, we also got a couple of cool interviews coming from up there. Um, a bunch of new videos coming out under what we call the New Shooters Library. Um, so we got a few companies that donated product and good to help out with educating new shooters on what they should be getting and buying. So one of them being these great guys here. 
Enforce was nice enough to send us awesome. some gifts. Um, cool. And so we'll be working with HK and a bunch of other people to just help new shooters out. So that's what's coming up on the channel. Awesome, awesome. Say what's up to uh, Mr. Corleone Noir for us. I will <laughs> you like see it. him up there at the show. There's going to be some other people. I think Argo J will probably yeah. be up there yeah. at that show. Argo's, uh, you know, and shout out, you know, shout out, and uh, and Hank, thanks for for us meeting on your platform. Shout out, Argo's a good dude. We talked on the phone yesterday. Uh, he's actually going to greet me in town when I get there. He's going to make sure I get to watch cool. the fight while I'm in town. Oh, cool. Uh, so, That's yeah. my big brother, but you got to be careful with Argo because you – you will get drunk just from hanging around him if you are not careful. <laughs> you know what? I used to drink a lot. Now, literally, if I look at a beer, I get a little woozy. He's at, at, at a situation like this. If, if this is, there's a thing like this going down, and let's say there's like six parties going on in the town, Argo is at every single one of those parties at the same time. He has some kind of like time travel <laughs> device or something so no but he's cool argo is cool and and definitely say what's up to colion noir we are trying to get him to come on the show for everyone's gonna be like oh you should get colin noir yes we're we're trying to you know we're trying to get him to come on the show we're working on that as well as some other people and we'll eat we know we're even working on getting argo j to come back he's a good dude so let me wrap this up we've been going for a while i gotta go like drain the monster <laughs> in the bathroom <laughs> right now you guys don't want to be here for that. It's a scary Probably sight. Not. I'm good. Yeah. So <laughs> I want to uh, thank everyone in the chat that's been hanging out with us. It's awesome. Lots of cool comments, lots of people in there. Thanks to everyone for like sharing, hitting the thumbs up button, and um, you know, making sure they're subscribed. Of course, thanks to uh, the real Cujo for donating 50 bucks to the cause. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You know, thank you very much. I want to thank everyone that sponsors us. That would be Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, and Andrew's Custom Leather, of course. Big Daddy Guns that gives us this space. And all the other people on Patreon that support us. We are Patreon slash Hank Strange. I want to thank those guys. And my last words before I throw up the peace sign is definitely go out there and support Safety Harbor Firearms. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put forward. Nice meeting you, Kevin. Likewise, likewise, Ivan. Peace, peace.